Oh, come on, Plowsy! <laughs> I mean, it, everything looks up to par. I'm not saying that we're not. I'm just saying the big pick energy is saying we're not. We are. There was only okay. one guy, then it means we're up. <laughs> Two guys, right. but I don't know. The other one was... Uh... We are on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Carl, Carl Pelker's in there, Doug. Uh, hello, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Doug, uh, if you say it's Ali Marmol, uh, then the answer is Ali Marmol. Uh, you were saying you were really surprised that he, he uh, did not get extended after last year's campaign. Yeah. And you knew that other organizations were hoping that the Cardinals wouldn't extend him so they could get him after this year. Yeah. Uh, but as is uh, becoming a tradition, the Cardinals like to give unnecessary extensions in mid-March. Mm-hmm. When I saw the Brian Bar are you on that text you get from Brian Barto? Yeah. Uh, part of me wants to just text him and say you can take me out of it, but the, the occasionally something like this will pop up where hey news conference at uh, I think it was twelve thirty St. Louis time on uh, Friday in Jupiter, and I thought ah, Goldschmidt extension, but given the choice. <laughs> of what it actually wound up being versus what I thought it was going to be, mm. I think I'd rather have the Goldschmidt extension. If you would have told me going into this offseason, an offseason in which the franchise is coming off of its worst finish since 1990 and had a dastardly performance following a really subpar and strange offseason the previous offseason, that two of their moves would be to bring back Matt Carpenter and signed Ali Marmolk to an extension, I would have given you <laughs> 500 to 1 on it. Yeah. And alas, here we are. But they did get Daniel Descalso and Lance Lynn, too. So the nostalgia tour will be strong to quite strong. I mean, this might be the strongest one we had. Yeah. Maybe not depth, but, mm -hmm. I mean, girth. I was surprised that they didn't give Marmol like eight or nine year extension. Two years is frankly not enough coming off the 90s loss season. With that. Uh, I was stunned that. It just solidifies my belief that he's not calling the shots. That if you don't hold a manager accountable for the worst season in more than 30 years, then someone else is probably calling the shots, and I think that's the case. I think Mazalak's not just the president of baseball operations. I think he's the de facto manager as well. And so if you're not going to blame the manager, uh, who's left? So if you're the one calling the shots and you you can – Call all the shots, you know. Call down. I, I, I just really think it's, it's Mazalock and the guys with the laptop computers in the analytics room who are calling the shots on the team. Here's what uh, John Mazalock told Katie Wu. So this is not the press conference. This is an interview with the Athletic via theAthletic.com. I've always had a lot of confidence in Ali. I think Ali grew from last year. I think there are some things that he would do differently if he could. And anybody that's growing in a job, that's what you want to see. The reality is. We're always growing in our jobs. No matter how long you do things, you're still evolving, you're still changing, and you're still trying to do what you do better. And I think in Ollie's case, he was very reflective about that. I never doubted he was the right person for this job, but I also thought of all the things wow. we needed to get done right away. And this, ex this extension was something we could deal with later. Uh, but then, Doug, he decided we were doing a lot of unpacking on the season. Do you like the, the term unpacking? No, dude, I, this dude needs to get out of sight. As, as you read this, Plowsy's vibrating kidding. over there. I'm going to go ahead and slip on the hot the, take. Yeah, the <laughs> group yeah. text in, but you're going to come out in the, yeah. worst in the 7 o'clock hour. We were doing a lot of unpacking on the... A lot of unpacking in corporations. Yeah. You ever notice that? Why do you have to grow in the job here? You I grow in the job in the saying. minor league. Trying to think here. about what we could learn or what we could do different. At the time, I said, as far as a contract extension goes, let's not focus on on that right now. Let's just worry about the roster, get ourselves into a position, and then maybe at some point we'll revisit it, or maybe we will simply wait until the end of the year. But as the offseason transpired, I felt like overall the roster was in a pretty good spot. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was going to go. Well. So as camp was starting to unfold, I started thinking more and more about Ali and his situation. And the more I thought about it, I felt like we should try to do something. I feel he has the support of the players, the coaching staff, and obviously the front office and ownership. So I began talking to Bill about it much more 
in earnest. In my head, I just made a mental note that I'm just going to go out there and do my job and do it well and let this end up the way it's supposed to end up, Marmol Mar -Mar said. And at the end of the day, this is where I want to be. So my hope was this would be the case. I want to do this for a long time, and I don't want to uh, do it anywhere else. I was hoping something could be structured where we could go into the year and feel good about it. So Doug finishes in last place. Uh, and now has the extension because the roster is set. Uh. <laughs> hmm. I also, there was another Mazalak quote where he said, I feared that if we got off to a slow start, people were going to start looking around to, to blame somebody. And but, I, didn't, I yeah. didn't want that to happen, knowing this was the last year of his contract. Come on. Heat the definition of a I lame mean, duck. Like this, I, you don't want to go in if somebody has like a, a track record mm. to where it's the final year of the deal. But he, th he has no other options. I love how he said, I, this is where I want to be. Where the hell else are you going to go? No <laughs> other team is going to hire you as a manager. Let me tighten up the mittens. <laughs> but uh, I don't are the EDF group mittens. Uh, <laughs> EDF is online at, at uh, edfgroup.com. Sponsor of the Hot Take Mittens. And you knew they were going to be used uh, today, and Doug, God, they are. They're out early. and they burn, no matter what <laughs> takes. Uh, just one more quote, and then plow. Oh, no, no, can... I love the quote. They're actually great. Uh... When, when it came to getting the extension done, um, as Alex said, all three of us were somewhat relieved. <laughs> relieved? No, I, I don't even Because know. the Dodgers were coming after him hot and heavy. This is an Onion article. Because like... what you didn't want to have happen is if we got off to a rocky start, all of a sudden everybody is calling up someone's head. So really it was more of not just a vote of confidence because he knows we appreciate what he does and how hard he works. But I still think it's something that now no longer will be a distraction for Ollie, the staff, the players, and the front office. Doug, so they're relieved they were able to get it done because uh, the competition mm -hmm. was fierce. Those are the managers that are in the hottest demand, the ones who take a, a pretty good team and, and put them in dead last place and lose 90 games in a bad <laughs> division. Those are the managers everybody wants. I would venture to guess, and I'm not going to say guarantee because I don't know, I'll venture to guess no one in the history of sports has ever been given an extension after finishing in last place in their division. I mean, it's going to be hard to look that up, but it's hard to yeah. think off the top of my head where would he be quote. This is absolutely, like, laughable, and it's it's clear that they don't want to win just because of the, how you look at, like, Mike Schilt, one manager of the year, 190 games, That's not lost, 190 more bizarre. games, yeah. and that was proceeded personal. to get five. I, I get that, but they didn't paint it as personal. And now they're extending a guy who lost 90 games who clearly doesn't have control of the, the locker room. I mean, the, the locker room doesn't feel like it, it's very complete with him at the helm. I, I don't understand this one bit. I think it's one of the funniest things that the Cardinals have ever done. And I'm completely with Doug. This is like a Mo move through and through. Like, he has a manager that he can tell to jump and Marmol act how high. Uh, like that's it. Mr. Siders, is that Jackson's opponent in the first round? Doug? No, I wouldn't know that. I don't know. Right, Jackson? Yeah. Uh, he says Mo is sabotaging the Cardinals <laughs> in the Jeff Lottman Compass well, Realty Text. I don't know about that. Uh, Alan Dadeville says, was this press conference from an aircraft carrier with a mission accomplished banner hanging off the ship? <laughs> Doug, that's Alan Dadeville, and he loves the Bulldogs. Uh, Todd Reesing, is that your opponent in the first round, Plowhawk? I'm excited to me and play against. I'm starting uh, to think he season. might be a, uh, like a character himself. He says so. a lot of surface level thinking on the show this morning, Doug. He uh, doesn't think we're thinking about this no. deeply enough. You know? No, because I sure like that some guy. That was a good reason. text. There's some deep reason why he's one of the best managers in the league, and we just don't see it. Let's recap the off season going into the spring training. All right, uh, <laughs> quickly. Um, <laughs> They sign two guys that are almost 40. Then they do sign an ace. Well, he won't be on the roster opening day. Um, they give a terrible manager an extension, and they bring Yadier Molina back, and you've yet to see him with about four days left in spring training. All they're doing is like buzzwords. Carpenter. Yeah, buzzwords to the fan base. Carpenter, bobbleheads, Yadi, like, uh, win. Yeah. <laughs> like, they think they're just, like, sheep, and they may be, yeah. but I would be surprised. I saw a ton of backlash locally. I don't know what the national media had to say in terms of, I didn't see any Probably don't national care. pundits really <laughs> care. Yeah, I think, I think I'm with you. It was mainly local uh, uprising. I didn't see anybody from a national media outlet go, oh, man, this is a terrible signing. They probably assume that, well, you have another bad year, then you'll get fired. Okay, you owe a manager two years without working.
It happens in other places. And the cherry on top, just we know it's all going to happen. Victor Scott will not be on this roster opening day. Well, well Victor Scott take. That was it. Let me pass him up even more. Yeah, yeah. And they're uh, strapped where he can. I be. almost got fired. <laughs> almost the fire almost <laughs> leaped in the <laughs> sleeve there on that one. Best player in spring. He'll be in Memphis during the year. How about Prieto? He's had a big year, big spring at least. Also, he's hitting like four hundred something. But, you know, this happens in the spring. The 40 man. Yeah. I don't know. It, this is really depressing. Feel, it doesn't feel like we're going into this season with, Why do you with say high that? hopes and optimism. Why do you say that? We just seem to be down on the club. We got, we got an ace on the shelf or a utility man on the shelf. I'm telling you. I, I, for real, it does bring me back to the Matt Carpenter thing. What was that, six years ago maybe? Uh... Well, we got a text, same deal, Brian Bartow is the Cardinals media relations guy. Uh, they send out text announcements. I mean, we'll get one here momentarily when Ali Marmol will be available there every day down in Jupiter. Mm -hmm. When the clubhouse opens, when it closes, it's just one of those things. It's kind of a nuisance, but if you're in Jupiter, it's helpful. And, and Doug and I, uh, and anybody I'm sure at this point, can be on that list if you really want it. So you get these notes that there's a press conference, and then I immediately go to Twitter to see what... You know, Denton, Katie Wu, Derek Gould, whomever is, is reporting, and they're uncertain. And then immediately, it, in my mind, if a free agent signing is taking place, it's going to be a national reporter who gets that. That's not a reflection on Derek, Katie, or John. It's just the agents leak it. There's a little currency. You, you know, leak stuff for me, and I'll leak stuff for you, and that's the way the game is played. And then... But it, but so that with this, it's like, okay, if nobody knows, then it's got to be more of an internal thing that the Cardinals are doing, and I thought it was Goldschmidt, which I wasn't going to be excited about, but I kind of figure it's coming just because it's, mm -hmm. it's a Cardinal-type move. But this, holy crap, I'm just, it's so tone deaf it's like they don't even care it's like they're almost doing stuff to piss people <laughs> off yeah. and for the record i don't blame ali marmol for last year i'm not saying i think he's great i just don't think you can have i mean you you can and i know people do the roster was bad blame Mazalak. blame bill dewitt blame whomever okay the roster was bad well then the manager was was the reason why they didn't win well which which one is it and then people say well both that's fine but either way i have no idea how after that season you would go, well, let's extend him. It just sends a message of you're either accepting it or that you have no idea how disenfranchised your fan base has become. And I'm just in awe of the crap they continue to do. It's amazing to me. And I've been following this organization for 40-plus years, day in and day out, and at no time has it ever struck me as being as tone-deaf as it is than right now. Yeah, yeah, I would have to agree. I, all the reaction I saw from the Marmol resigning was negative. I didn't see anybody say, yes, great, we got our guy. I, how can you, though? Even if you feel that way, you can't well, possibly put that on social media. Yeah. You know, we got him. But it was almost, almost unanimously negative. Now, we'll never get to a cronky Demoff level. Like, I, 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 I no, know that, that, but, bad. like, this, this feels like something the Rams would have done 15 years ago, you know what I mean, 10 years ago. Like or or just, when they were in tank mode, Yeah, like when they were just, trying to, to do bad things. Like putting that extra knife just, uh -huh. you know, right in there, <laughs> just to twist it uh -huh. around. Not the Cardinals, though. This, to me, seems odd. Tone deaf's a great word for it. I just, I don't know, when they're talking in these meetings, obviously the quotes, we all three were relieved. Do they actually talk about how it's perceived like on the outside or do they just not care what people will say like obviously don't care. you just lost 90 games you fired a manager a few years ago yeah. just won the manager of the year it's all weird probably and don't care or believe that they've got all the information they need to make the right decision and how could fans possibly know what the right decision is when they don't have all the information we know what they're, what we're doing they're just guessing this is what we think we ought to do Need like a PR firm attached to that meeting. Like somebody goes, okay, if you guys want to do this, here's how we got to pitch it. Because even the quote that Tim read, those are terrible. The roster. We were relieved. Like, I mean, you're in control of it. <laughs> so I don't understand. Like, to be relieved by something. There was no. <laughs> there was no confidence. It's like if Doug. It's like the four of us go. Where should we get to lunch? And then we decide. Go oh, God. Thank God we got that figured yeah, out. I mean, we were, it was our decision. Mm -hmm. There was nobody. There was nobody on the outside 
controlling it. Uh, guys, the signing seems very similar to the Rams signing Jeff Fisher. Question, are the Cardinals moving? <laughs> <laughs> that's where it's gone now. No, I don't think so. That's from Touched by an Uncle. And then the next text, the Orson Woods Wacko says, the Cardinals are moving. How else can you explain this bag of b-holes they have oh. collected that Doug gets the Orson Woods Wacko? I don't think they're moving. Uh, Had a couple see. things gone differently, you know, the end of the game could have been different. Uh, guys, this is tone deaf, but not as tone deaf as not starting the show with Wyndham Clark and Scotty Scheffler. So that's from the Loomster. So he no. agrees, Doug, it was the lead. I don't think that was the lead. No, it wasn't the lead. It was one of the leads. I don't think just throwing things out, I threw out another thing. I don't think that was one of them. We knew this would be the lead. Somebody said, um... Oh, actually, Bernie Nicholas did his column. He was one of the few that said it was the right decision. Um, I actually kind of think the way, I mean, I've read Derek's, Ben, Fredrickson's, Katie's, and, and I haven't read Bernie's, actually, so I need to read Bernie's, but I kind of felt like it was all somewhat su supportive of it, which I have to say surprises me, and it really surprises me, actually, if Bernie's, but I haven't read Bernie's, so I don't know yet. Yeah, he made a point, which it'll never happen, but he said, you know, let's be honest, if you have the terrible year, they can still fire him next year. I agree with that, and Ben mm -hmm. Fredrickson said the same thing. Yeah. So this is more of an optics move, but then if that's the case, what do they think, the players don't realize that too? And is this because Yadier Molina and, and Albert Pujols have expressed interest in managing? And are they that, like, threatened by social media? So then, if anything, they're really locked in by social media, but then yet they orchestrate tone-deaf moves, so it's an odd thing. It's kind of a paradox. Yeah. You don't think they did it to get... Uh... Molina and Pujols off their back. Stop asking. We got a guy for but another again, two years. Again, they control that... it. I know. I mean, unless Albert Pujols is acquiring the franchise, it doesn't matter if he wants to manage the Cardinals. And either way, I still think that whole thing. It must. It must be personally that they really like Ali. That the the front office and the players really like him personally. Cool. Awesome. Go out to dinner and have golf with them later after the games are done. Like he doesn't need to have that role just because you like the guy. Yeah. That was Jeff Fisher's uh, big quality, too. Everybody liked him. He was a great guy. And so he always had a job. And Whether he's finished 7 or 9 or not, they thought, oh, we like this guy so much, we don't want to fire him. And we couldn't possibly have a worse spring training offensively. We have our aces on the shelf. We have Edmund, who can play three or four position. He's gone. Why do you hate the JC? Like, you couldn't start this season... Like, which is, like, worse, and now you're extending a guy who lost 90 games. So the fan base is already riled up before the season yeah. even starts. It's just bad timing for me, and it just seems like they're not really registering just how on edge the fan base is and what this would have done. Doug, I'm going to come out of a Twitter uh, retirement. Uh, of course, I still tweet out the... Uh, mom uh, at LSU. Was that 2019? I don't know the years, Yeah, but that's, that's ever great. And though. see what the... Uh, what the what the what the fans say regarding the uh, contract extension? Oh, I'm sure they're all for it. Well, what percentage five. of disapproval? You think five percent will be for it? You think it'll be ninety-five disapprove? That's yeah, probably. That's I think about right. pro <laughs> uh, while I uh, do that, Doug, why don't you tell people about uh, Kelly and Thompson phone line sponsor? We have phone line sponsor, and they've been a, a business since uh, 1950. I was thinking of I was watching HD TV the other day. You know those shows where they go oh, in and the and the, the kitchen's a mess and everything's outdated and the house is all chopped up, and then by the end of the episode, the house looks like a show place because it's it's been professionally redone and remodeling. You go, wow, this is great. Why why would we move? This is the kind of thing that Callier and Thompson has done and can do for you. Carolyn Beard and Bob Strati are the owners. They've been doing this, uh, the two of them now, for more than 20 years, and Callier and Thompson itself has been around since the 1950s. They have a commitment to quality. They don't just do kitchens and bathrooms, also basements. They do wine rooms, man caves, bars, accent room, fireplace walls, offices. You name it, they probably do it, and they have a painting department now, too. They can make your home look like a show place. They've been doing it for many, many years for thousands of St. Louisans. Now, almost everything with Callier and Thompson is right there in-house. You don't need to go to five or ten different places to remodel one room with Callier and Thompson. The countertops, appliances, lighting, the flooring, hardware, plumbing, you name it, it is all right there in-house. They have a huge selection 
of appliances, 10,000 square foot showroom right there on Manchester Road in Baldwin next to Uncle Bill's Pancake House. Bills. I was out there, took a little look-see around. They've got some great stuff. This is a place where if you want it done right, this is where you go. You go to Callier and Thompson, and they can make your home look like a show place. Callier and Thompson, come home to quality online at callierandthompson.com. If you are feeling sluggish this Monday morning, that just might be a Monday morning, or it could be a symptom of low testosterone, low energy, low motivation, weight gain, muscle loss, fatigue, tired all the time, feeling anxious, feeling moody, irritable, impatient. Those are symptoms of low testosterone. Well, let Mentality at LowTUSA.com help your cause. Mentality is a local health care facility specifically dedicated to helping men feel and perform and their very best. It doesn't matter what age you are. Low testosterone can be an issue with any guy, even if you've tried testosterone before. Not everyone understands the blood chemistry in men's bodies. Mentality can help. The normal range for testosterone is large. If you've been to a doctor and they told you that you were normal without understanding the range or testing your free testosterone, it was not fully looked at, come get checked with Mentality at LowTUSA.com. Get involved on the program, 636-9004-TMA, Callier and Thompson phone lines. Text in to the Jeff Lotman Compass Realty text inbox. That's J-E-F-F. L-O-T-T-M-A-N-N dot com. Houses now popping up all over town on the market here as we enter spring. Get your advice from somebody who's been doing it for 22 years. Whether he is buying or selling, Jeff Lotman has over half a billion dollars in sales in the St. Louis market. J-E-F-F-L-O-T-T-M-A-N-N. Dot com Jeff Lotman, Compass Realty, sponsor of our text inbox. Jeff Lotman, Compass Realty, sponsor of the text inbox, which you can participate in by texting 314-881-TMA5. And you can email in for our design air, heating, and cooling email of the day, the morning after at InsideSTL.com. Blueberry Pop Pop uh, with an eight-goal uh, month so far. Buck Swope with two, and then Jason has one email in the morning after at InsideSTL.com. Kelly Chase and Barrett Jackman in studio at 8 o'clock as the Blues have won four straight. We'll talk it over with them, plus uh, more on Kelly Chase's uh, game, raising money for cancer research. Siteman uh, coming up at 8 o'clock here on TMA, presented to you by Brown and Croup. And, Doug, let's see what, uh, let's see what we got here. People with the fan support... And status of Pools and Molina threaten Mazalok's hold on the franchise. He does not want to have another Larusa type figure managing the club, so Mo needed to exert his dominance again, and extending Marmol is part of that. That's from the 314. In Katie Wu's article, uh, she notes how surprised uh, Ali Marmol was when he was called into the office and told he was an extension. Mazalok said, quote, I gave him no warning with a smile. <laughs> These guys must have a lot of fans. There's got to be Put pictures, a USB. Like, there's got to be something here. They were relieved when it got done. What did he delete the photo that he had? Like, there's yeah. got to be something outside of being an actually a good game manager. The quote but, that got me is when he said he's learning on the job. Did they hire Whitey Herzog and Tony Larusa to come here and he said learn he's on, the on the job? Well, he said that Marmo. One, one of the earlier quotes was that he's learning on the job. Well, he and said getting he's still better. evolving. And we evolving, all learning. Yeah, I. Th they used to hire veteran managers with a long track record of success, and the last three, Matheny, Schilt, and Marmo, had been rookie managers who po supposedly need to learn and evolve on the job. When did we get away from hiring people that you know have done it and can win to? To rookies. That, that's where they are. Uh, right now, 88.5% uh, disapprove, 115 That's only 78 votes, though, Doug, so it's uh, early in the uh, precincts reporting. You know, I agree you don't fire him after last year. I mean, he made the playoffs the year before. It's only second year. You don't fire him after last year. But you don't give him an extension. You say, come back. All right, let's see what you can do this year. Prove you can manage this team, and then we'll talk about an extension. And if he doesn't do it, well, you're gone. But just now. Nah. Yeah, how are those uncomfortable conversations? Right. This is big boy league. Like, this is a real job. You didn't perform last well, year. Well, they did have that conversation in October. And then Marmol talked about being comfortable with the situation and understanding it in December. And then he was called into the office this past Thursday and told uh, they wanted to extend him. Uh, Doug, Todd Reesing uh, is not happy. Uh, oh. He's sending in a number of texts. 
let's imagine the Cardinals are an AM morning show and management didn't give you the tools to succeed, fired your board up, took, to, took your signature event and bragged about a free putting green and a number of other issues, and then they went and fired Tim because it's his fault that the show didn't succeed. But yes, make fun of me because you were smarter than a billionaire who is the best owner in the history of St. Louis sports. I guess he hasn't earned the benefit of the doubt. If you don't like what I'm saying, I'll call in. No. Oh. <laughs> no, we don't want to hear you. Don't do that. Please. <laughs> We can't handle it. Yes, Twitter should be the decider. Jackson, what's the number so I can call in about this? 636-904-TMA. Have I said that? Okay. Couple three. Couple I like three that. Time. You like a couple? I don't mind it. It's kind of old school. <laughs> couple three. Couple three. Uh, Todd, feel free to call in. 636-9004-TMA. And we can also preview the Plowhawk versus uh, Todd Reesing in the first round. Uh, Jackson uh, versus Mr. Cider. It's Iggy versus Mr. Licks. Uh, me versus the Pope. And Doug, who are you playing? Uh, I, I don't know. I haven't even looked. Now I'd part... like a matchup with a recovering alcoholic. Ooh, Doug. that's a nice matchup. Oh, that's a nice pairing. That's, that's a... who I am? That's who I'd like to see. <laughs> oh. I, like to, I just want to see you. I want to be in the group. <laughs> now, just what Prod Joe know ain't listening, I did just pay my league safe dues what? for tonight's fantasy baseball, by the way. There it is. Doug. Taking care of some internal business. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been tended to. Oh, my God. I had to bring that up because I didn't know if Prod Joe could text. Uh, let's see. Had the announcement on Friday been they hired Buck Showalter, Joe Girardi, or Joe Madden, it would have 100% had, or it would have had a 100% approval rating. That's from Eric mm -hmm. in the Central SN. Look for a Mike Gersh extension later today. That's from former fan page moderator Neil Allen, Craig Paquette. Maybe it's me, but I'm going to really be pulling for San Diego to have a big year. This move made me an even bigger Padres fan this year. That's from uh, Milagro Tequila, texture of the year, 2023 Arbor Day. By saying that, he's pulling for Mike Schilt. That's correct. He's a new skipper for San Diego. That's what makes this more odd for me was seeing the success that other managers have had. Now, I'm not saying Matheny was a great in-game manager, had some questionable playoff decisions. But did win 90 games a couple times. Am I correct on that one? The division went to the NLCS, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, yeah. So when you're looking at the track record of managers in the past and those who have not gotten extended, this one is just mind-blowing. And there's really no real explanation. They can, you know... Put on your sweater, tie it around your oh, neck. Oh, the sweater got brought know, up at 7.37. Kick your, kick your feet up on a $1,000 ottoman there at Seminole and puff your cigar and talk Seminole, about how much smarter you are than everybody else. But, like, the outside looking in, we're not complete morons. This is a dumb idea. This is just a complete dumb decision. And from what you've done in managers past, this is just not going to help the fan base kind of ease the 90 loss season from a, a year ago. No. Well, Yachty and Pujols have to know that as long as... Yachty will never be in the Cardinal as Clubhouse Zaylock dugout. still here, never will. neither one of them will ever manage. There's no way he's going to put somebody in there that's got more power than he does. I agree with that, yeah. sir. Yeah. It's his team. Is it too early for him to drink bleach, or do we have to wait for him to call in to drink bleach? <laughs> Who is calling in to drink bleach? That's I, from the Vic Tanny aerobics instructors? Probably Reesing. Oh, Remember when he said, you want me to call in, acting all tough, and we all go, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great to talk it over. He's very worked up about uh like the criticism of the Ali Marmol extension. There aren't any Vic Tannies still around. <laughs> <laughs> what was the deal with Vic Tanny? Was that like a 24-hour fitness? Yeah, it was like a gold gym. That's a smaller gym. version. That's the one I used to go to. Vic Tanny? Tanny? Yeah. I never worked <laughs> out. I just go for the steam room and the sauna. Uh, hey, Todd, be sure to remove Moe's scrotum from your mouth prior to phoning in, fella. That's from mm. the River to Pair Yacht Captain. Uh, I have more respect for Schilt now. He obviously stood up to Mazalok. That's from... The 314. Yeah. We fired Mike Schilt after winning Manager of the Year, and we just extended a guy who led us to the most losses we've had <laughs> since 1995. This organization seems to almost be trolling the fan base at this point, and with Mo operating with what appears to be 100% accountability, this new organizational culture will not go away until the team is sold someday. That's from little Tommy Tribbins that he's in the parking lot, even though it's pretty cold out there today. Don't I don't think they have any plans to sell. So if you're talking, let's do hypotheticals, because we love that on this show. Let's say another 90, let's say a carbon copy of last year. Your, your last, you lost 90-some games. Mm. Like, is there ever a chance DeWitt fires, the DeWitts fire Mosellock, or that relationship? is done, it's important we talk about this, Mosellock is done after next year. And then a bloomer. 
I, they haven't announced who will be the new president of baseball operations, but I mean, he's already called his shot. He's gone. So he's untouchable now, obviously, because he's going to move in the apartment business. Apartment <laughs> business. That's he what he's getting into. What he's been doing. He won't have to move into any business. He's made a fortune. <laughs> he'll be he'll be showing up at Stephen Wells' door. <laughs> Anybody here to collect How's rent? As a plumbing. <laughs> he has definitely said that this is the last year he's going to be here. No, after next year. That he's right. going to step away and retire. Yeah. No, not that he's going to retire, but that he's not going to be the president of baseball operations. No. Oh. Yeah. And I, my, my theory, for the record, do with it what you want, and this is 100%. I shouldn't say it's 100% mine. Um, but I would, all, I would consider the person who has shared this theory as well as somebody that uh, our audience would find to be credible, um, is that he will go into the role that Bill DeWitt III has, which is the business side, which is also under the umbrella of the apartment side. <laughs> and then uh, Bill DeWitt will become the chairman. And then whether it be Bloom or somebody else, then becomes president of baseball operations. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. Mo seems awfully, awfully hooked into the uh, personnel side of it. Well, that's fine, but he's, he's done. Yeah. He's leaving. So he's got him. I mean, so they can get rid of him now. But I mean, I think their plan is to. He's going to be done at the end of twenty five. Yeah. So the talk of firing him would be odd, since he's kind of. But I mean, what does that? How much power does that say when you can kind of say I'm leaving, but I'm not leaving for you know mm -hmm. twenty months. Man, twenty eleven bought his ass. Which goes back to, any time this topic comes up, the way that Joe Strauss said that that month, or month, well, I mean, it was really two months, the end of August all the way to the end of October, and how much that shifted the way the organization was about to change from what happened to what was going to happen. Because if they just finish as another also-ran, that means that the team, while they did go to the playoffs in 2009 under Mazalak, uh, they didn't win a game in that playoff series. Now, that's a lot of results-oriented because Matt Holiday catches a ball, and they do. But either way, that was a very good team. But they didn't go in, in oh, 08, they didn't go in 10, and they wouldn't have gone in 11. But then they go on that run, they win the World Series, and I believe Strauss knew that La Russa was going to be stepping away. You would have had Albert Pujols leaving, Dave Duncan leaving, and I think there's a good chance that they also would have turned the page on John Mazalak at that point. So the Plowhawk, with regard to what you're saying, 2011 buying equity, it did. But keep in mind, 2011 was not in a vacuum. You then had 12, which was an NLCS, 13, which was a pennant, 14, another NLCS, and 15, which was a 100-win season. Who can complain about that? And then from people who were around the organization at that time feeling like if you had Tony La Russa managing, they may have won a world championship or two in all of those NLCSs. Uh, and those are baseball people feeling like baseball moves uh, that were made were not necessarily the optimal ones and hurt the team. So then that bought the equity for 16, 17, and 18, which were middling years, but then they go back to the NLCS with what I think was their weakest team of the 2000s um, that got to the NLCS, the 2019 team. Um, I thought that was a, a very average team to be one of the final four in Major League Baseball. 2020 is a write-off. 2021, you have the run to get into the playoffs. That's a one and up thousand kind of situation but either way it did happen and so you're in the playoffs by definition for one game and then you win the division in 2022 so i mean it's a it's a it's a pretty damn good run but i think the fan base uh does not necessarily feel real strongly about it because comparatively speaking to 2000 through 2015 it doesn't feel like the same caliber of baseball baseball decisions being made and when you see a lot of the players who the organization has parted ways with have success elsewhere, that increases the frustration. Mm -hmm. And it's such a long season that when you suffer through a really horrible season, it gets people pretty comfortable thinking our team isn't very good. And you, you, know, you develop a short memory for what you've done in the past. That, that could be where we are right now. We just went through a six-month season where it was pretty horrible from start to finish. And so that's kind of what we think that the state of the team is right now. Well, let's be honest. The last eight years, it's not been jumping for joy deep runs either. 
Not deep not growth, saying but it's competitive 90 losses. I, I agree. I was just about to say, not 90 losses and dead last and no sign of hope with roster or management. or I, I get that. This is probably the worst it's felt. But they, I, I they wouldn't say it's a sudden We haven't been back to the picnic table. Hmm? Well, I mean, they won a division in 90-plus games in 22. You think it's related? I could see it. Our picnic they know table that we are to hold them accountable. And the, the, going to the World Series is related? I think so. Yeah. Think about that, Doug. Hey, Kelly Chase, Bear Jackman coming up at 8 o'clock in the studio here. So uh, we'll close out the Mungan S. St. Louis Acura, Alton Toyota, 7 o'clock hour at some point a little earlier today to... Uh, to set that up, they'll be in here uh, coming up at 8 o'clock. Ozzy Smith in studio uh, tomorrow. What's he promoting? On the morning golf. after. He's got a golf thing coming up. I'm not sure. Hmm. Uh, he's moving on to Brooks Brothers. That's where John Mazalak is going. That's from oh. five, So he's leaving to go to Brooks Brothers? I know. Did you he, heard that? I, I had got equity it. stake, but I, I didn't know he swore this way. I mean, talk nice about clothes. A, He's one of the best grifters we've had in St. Louis. Oh, I know. I'm not going to say. We have a couple that come to mind, but he is we really do. good at it. One the audience is probably well-versed in, the other the five of us are. Uh, what becomes of Gersh, or is he the fall guy? That's from Cuckleberry Finn. Uh, Doug, do you think he becomes the pa president? No. Of I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> the fall guy? Well, he, he could, well, to say, will he become president of baseball operations? Possibly. I don't think he's going to be the fall guy. Well, Zaylock picked him to be at number two. It's easy. Mo could maybe on his way out go, hey, also before I leave, this is Gershon's job. Uh, Todd Reesing uh, looks like he wants to play, place a wager with you, Plowhawk. Can I get a bet with my Jay Jr. Fan Page Club championship opponent that, quote, Yachty Molina will never be in the Cardinals' dugout as a manager? Are you interested in wagering with I Todd Reesing? Not on the golf. I don't, the... I don't think I'm willing to wager that. One, it will be years from now. I thought now, you we'll said it was as long as Mazalak was in the position, but I don't want to give you an out if that's not what you said. I don't think that's what I said. I, I just said thought, that. in general, I don't think he'll be the I Cardinal I think Yadier manager. Molina could absolutely be a Cardinal manager. That's why I'm not going to take a bet. I would be very surprised if he were the Cardinal manager with John Mazalak as president of baseball operations. I couldn't that's see him doing 160-some-odd pre- and post-game. I, I, can't, can't I can't see him... Being able to get on board with that, he made 150 million. He's a cardinal legend. Like, this can only really hurt and derail his legacy. Like, yeah, I, I don't, I, I, I don't see, see him the doing it either. In it for yeah. him, man. You can chill in Puerto Rico, Miami, wherever you want to stay. You can be the owner of the basketball team. You can come and go as an advisor. Still make you know showcase that you're still around St. Louis. There is zero upside for him to become a manager. But I won't say it won't ever happen. Make the bet, because you, you can't lose. The only way that the, the bet would pay off is when, when uh, Yanni dies. Or well, one of us dies. He could be 80 years old say, well, he's, he may come back and manage. He may manage next year when he's 81. You, you, you won't lose the bet. Mm. I, no, I, you I, could lose the bet. You could never win the bet. Whoa. Yeah, because he could come manage any time. Yeah, but I, that's what the I other just, guy could say as well. You don't know yet. He might still be the man. Could you see, like, you Todd have... Reesing can work that out uh, over 18 holes, Doug, on wait. April 28th at Gateway National for the Jay Randolph Jr. Fan Page Club Championship. Munganast is the sponsor of the 7 o'clock hour. Munganast, St. Louis Acura, and Munganast, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota. Sponsor of our 7 o'clock hour and the Daily Fantasy Sports Showdown online at stlouisacura.com and altontoyota.com. And there's a secret number at 314-252-0029 for Munganast, St. Louis Acura, and Munganast, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota. The official automotive provider of TMA and the Tim McKernan Show podcast presenting sponsor of Balloon Party on 101 ESPN. Jeremy Rutherford with us at 1045 today. And then I imagine, Jackson, there'll be a Little Piddles weekend wrap-up? Yeah, it's a Little Piddles weekend wrap-up in general re relief group. You like that in general? What does all that mean? Well, just where I think the whole city is relieved that Marmol got this extension. Oh, right. <laughs> we were all relieved. We were about losing them. Yeah, there's yeah. like everyone just deep exhaling. <sighs> I couldn't imagine the relief and what leverage of any kind Ollie Marmol had in those meetings to go, I demand, two year. Uh, Jackson, who won the uh, Munganass Daily Fantasy Sports Showdown, Doug? And now it's on to Ponte Vedra. Oh. Uh, you know, Tim, right when you started doing the uh, Munganass read, I, I, I went into the old app uh, to look, and uh, it looks, it appears to me, Iggy, you had Brendan Todd, correct? Uh, yeah. All right, then Doug... 
Yeah, I had three missed the cut, so I'm oh, no. done. Doug has taken the players. Doug wins oh, the fifth wow. major the for fifth Doug. Major. Back in it. I Xander had, Shoffley. I had Shoffley, who finished yeah. one stroke away from Shoffley it. and Siwoo shaking that ass. Nice pick on Siwoo. Probably didn't catch. Why'd you pick no. Siwoo? Because he had won. And the name came up when I reached into the oh. box as well. <laughs> uh, Doug did not cash. He had some issues. Uh, Lucas Glover did not want to make the cut. Jordan Spieth did not make the cut. Uh, is it Kevin Yu? He did not make the cut. And then Iggy had a bunch of missed cuts. So it was a real, it was a real rock fight. Was but, it? But Doug uh, etches out a win in Ponte Vedra. Okay. I guess then. he didn't win by much then. But one nonetheless, <laughs> blindly picking, and you uh, did research. He won by like 30. That's a nice, comfortable so. win. I missed cashing in my game by 178 points. Not in this one. In this, this one, there's a far cry from cash. <laughs> no, I said I missed cashing by 178 points. Oh, okay, sorry. Just feel bad for the kids is all. You know, yeah, but the kid got to see you to me. get a fifth major. Remember three yeah. years ago, you had three or four locked in. Yeah. Well, this isn't a major. Well, the fifth major. Fifth we major, thought. my friend. Well, who could have seen Zalatoris play the way he did after... Well, that's my point. You can't really see any of them. They're all, they're all so good. They come and go. Uh, Doug, uh, as usual, they are not happy with the content of the show. This oh. time it's Joshy Tuna. Uh, he uh, is adamant. Uh, if it was Mizzou, they would talk about it the whole show, break down the region Mizzou got placed in, then break down Mizzou football schedule for next season, LOL. Uh, Doug, they are not happy with the content of the program, Joshy Tuna. Uh, mm. You can call in as well. You know, you'll be right behind Todd Reesing, 636-900-4TMA. Collier and Thompson phone lines. Uh, Illinois. Winning the Big Ten, as I said at the very beginning of the show, uh, but Josh may have been under an overpass. But Joshy Tuna, uh, we talked about the Illini winning it, and uh, what I would say are six legitimate lead story options. If you were uh, doing Sports Sunday last night, Doug, and I know you miss it, no. uh, with uh, Illinois not only winning the Big Ten over Wisconsin, who beat uh, Plowhawks guy on Saturday to get there. Uh, but uh, they go to the tournament, and they go to the tournament with some momentum, and maybe this could be their year. Oh. It will not be Kim English's year, though, because his team did not get the tournament along with a lot of teams from the Big East. No, is he single? Did we figure <laughs> that out? Who? Kim oh, English. Kim English? Oh, I... I uh, Paul, was, you got to be on a high about your ILL. I loved it. Came back from double digits in, I think, two of the game for sure. I loved watching tournament back ball in general. I was a little nervous about the matchup with Wisconsin. They just were on a heater. We beat them about a month ago, but they still got guys that can kind of kind of annoy us a little bit, but solid win. I the, the bracket's tough, though, but we're the lowest of the three seeds, so we get... UConn in the mix, Iowa State's in that mix. Could be a tough bracket. Iowa to get State through. just hammered Houston. Just yeah, hammered destroyed them. Houston. Yeah, so, I mean, it's a problem. BYU's a really good team that we'll play next, potentially, the tournament. Run to 32. When well, we're talking tournament this week, it's brought to you by James Quarleton. Nice. Of Carlton Insurance. Dot Net. Uh, your one shining moment is going to CarltonInsurance.net today to see how much you can save on car, home, and life insurance. He's my insurance agent. He's the Plowhawks insurance agent. He's Iggy's insurance agent. And I cannot say enough great things about James and his staff at the State Farm office in Webster Groves. Make the switch. They do all the paperwork for you. 314-961-4800 or go online at carltoninsurance.net. If your insurance costs a leg and an arm, call James Carlton State Farm. Plowhawk, are you bullish on this team making a run in the Final Four? Um... Probably not Final Four. I could see a, an Elite Eight appearance, which I do believe is when we would face that UConn top of that mm. East region bracket. Um, I, I don't love the size that we have, but I do love Terrence Shannon carrying this team in the Big Ten tournament. I don't know if I've seen a better player play three games of basketball. It probably has happened, but for, and for me to watch all three of those games start to finish, I don't know if I've seen a player dominate and control the momentum of the game as much as he did. What if you took on Bruce Paul to go to the Final Four? I'd love Illinois that. Illinois fans would love that opportunity. Though. I would love that as well. Like I said, it's a great, like, there will be great matchups in this bracket just because, yeah, I mean, Iowa State and UConn, Auburn, Illinois, and I forgot who the five, I think the five seed, maybe San Diego State. 
And then they got FAU in it, who made the Final Four last year with San Diego State. It's a beast of a bracket. And don't forget about the Dukes of Duquesne, Doug. Fun to see them in a tournament for the first time in 172 years. <laughs> yeah, it's been forever. It's 1977, it's insane. They beat the Billikens on the way. Oh. Uh, I love tournament time. It's a lot better. I know this is going to be it. not a dig at Mizzou, but like Illinois, we've struggled and haven't been in it. It's nice to have a team in the mix mm -hmm. to maybe get to a few games into the tournament. That makes it just all the more exciting. So I'm very excited and happy to, you know, have a team be a part of it. Well, now, I, gotta... I don't know. I, I wouldn't be surprised with the Final Four run because they do have a lot of talent. But with that bracket, I would be very shocked. KJ and Oton just sent in a screenshot of you saying, I don't even need to see a bracket to guarantee Illinois will be bouncing the round of 32. Is this from... It's just a wow. heat-of-the-moment post. I mean, we played terrible against Nebraska, and Nebraska couldn't miss. I uh, had a couple beers in me, so I, I threw a post oh, so this, out so this was this was actually from this year? Yeah, this is oh. from the Nebraska game. Oh, yeah, okay. Like uh, three days ago. But this is just a heat-of-the-moment. Well, I came was back at, and beat Nebraska. I was at Cyberg's. Yeah, wingy, I know. wingy. Ooh, that was so good. And, Doug, then wingy, all my, wingy. and my 22 ounce beer went green. Hockey, awesome. hockey went wingy. <laughs> wingy, went wingy. <laughs> so that was, yeah, I, I can eat crow on that. I don't just a passionate, quasi drunk. Because they were take down, how and, bad at, at half? They were down like, like 15 or Yeah, something. and they were, I mean, Nebraska was shooting like 65%, just yeah. could not miss. And it felt like that game was going to teeter us to a four seed. And you know how Illinois and four seeds are, were terrible. So, I put that out there. I apologize to the fan base afterwards. <laughs> you didn't shoot apology? I didn't, but I should have. Uh, let's see what we got. Hey, Joshy Tuna, no one cares about college hoops. Even less people care about the Illini. I let the grown-ups talk. That's from Crystal City oh. Clamhammer. Mayor Don says, crying Illini fan is almost as bad as <laughs> soccer guy. That's from Mayor Don Shrimply Pibbles. I don't understand why Smokey is watching these games after he said Zach Eady ruined the entire sport for him. Uh, that's from Shrimply Pibbles, Doug, and his wife is playing in the Jay Randolph Jr. He got called here. Smokey. My <laughs> I add, though, with the quote-unquote, oh, you takes are terrible. I called the 90 loss season for the Cardinals. I called the 11 game winning for the uh, the Missouri Tigers. You had Missouri going 11 and one. I had them winning the. I had them winning the bowl game to get them oh, to 10 right. or 11. I do believe in what it was. I, oh. I forgot exactly. Holy Double crap. digit win. Nonetheless, I, those are crickets. This, <laughs> I, I just cannot stand it. Zach Eady went national. Everybody talking about how he's ruined college basketball. I was saying it a month before that, so stop. Didn't you call Josh Schertz being the next Billiken coach? I did not. I did not. Oh. But Zach Eady has ruined the game of college basketball. If you watch him play ruined one it. minute of it, it is a nightmare. It is so hard to watch. That's why watching all the games I did this weekend, Zach Eady free was beautiful. Uh, that is uh, the Plowhawk, the Illini, going to the tournament, Doug. They'll take on Boarhead State. Okay. Uh, as a three seed, uh, your March Madness talk here on TMA brought to you by James Carlton. Your one shining moment is going to carltoninsurance.net today to see how much you can save on car, home, and life insurance. My plan was to try to break early and then bring in Kelly, Chase, and Barrett Jackman. But I have a feeling if I broke now and told Chase, hey, wait six, seven minutes while we break, yeah. he'd have me pinned up against the wall so quick I yeah. wouldn't know my name. So why don't we bring in Kelly, right. Chase, and Barrett Jackman right now. Uh, Doug, uh, number 39 and number 5 in your programs? Uh, number yeah, that's how I remember it. Number 1 in your heart, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, we need another chair. <laughs> right? I'll be happy to stand. I'm a tiny I'm say, boy. I stand I'm a tiny too. boy. I got like with... arm rest. Oh, there it my... is. Unbelievable. What a moment. I've never heard know. a gallery of the crowd. is charged Huge. up. Hello, guys. Say? Barrett Jackman in studio. And <laughs> Kelly Chase in studio <laughs> as well. There they are. What's going on, gentlemen? What do you say? Yeah, hey, you like that? Yeah, it's kind of classy around here now. We're old money, you know that. We're old money. Are you sure? Dan O'Neill. What do you say? Uh, how you doing, guys? What's up? Doing good. Yeah, we're only a couple of weeks from this uh, this big gala yeah. at Centene. Yeah, a couple of weeks away, and uh, still getting some guys calling, filling. Oh, is that right? Yeah, sitting, getting getting the odd call of. Ham called, and he's like, hey, uh, I'm trying to get there for it, and I heard about it, and so you're, you know, 
I think we're going to have more coaches than players by the sound. Oh, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> All our buddies are getting too old to put on their skates. <laughs> well, that this guy. You, what about you? you? You can probably still fly around out there. Uh, I wouldn't call it flying. <laughs> move, but, uh, you know, probably the same speed as I played. So, <laughs> the, uh, alumni game here. Is it a pride thing for some guys as they get a little bit older when they, they can't skate like they could when they're 25, and now that they're 45, they just don't want to go out there and, and not look the way they did in their prime? 100%. Is that what it is? Yeah, you, you, you don't lose your, like, you know exactly where the puck's going and when you're going to get it, before you get it, but you just can't get it there. <laughs> like, it's like, it's, it's weird, but it's funny because your hands, they, they, everything, everything kind of knows where it's supposed to, what it's supposed to do and when it doesn't operate, you're like, I, I, I got to watch this now. I can't play this. <laughs> It sucks. <laughs> <laughs> but this you, game's going to be very entertaining and fun to watch. Yeah. Everybody should come out and see yeah. it. <laughs> with, with that, yeah, well, no, no, no. We're much. going through the line. I swear, I swear to God, we're going through the lineup, and there's certain guys on, on there. I'm like, I got to phone him and tell him he can't play. And I had to phone guys and say, hey, you're out. Oh, and how do you guy, do that? You're out. <laughs> I mean, simple. Uh, you don't hesitate we, to we cut just, people. No, no problem at all. <laughs> I, I'm ready for management. Hey, 15, this kid's 15 years old, younger than you, and he can still move. You're out. Sorry. Mike any any Mike, pushback Mike, when you make these calls? Mike Zook, you're out. <laughs> he just got cut right here on the show. Oh, no, I, took, I, took, I, took up, I took some heat because I gassed Carbono and Daniel on the same day. And there, boys were giving me trouble that I don't like the French guys. And I'm like, no. okay, you got a point. But I, but I still got rid of Daniel and Carbono on the same day. Uh, how'd they take it? I don't know. They haven't talked to me since then. <laughs> They're still coming. Though. They're coming to the event. That uh, makes a difference. Outstanding. Uh, so uh, has the, the sides been chosen here? Or what do we oh, got yeah. going? What do we got? What do we got? Well, we got the blues. Uh-huh. Against uh, the NHL, yeah. the rest of the league. Yeah, and uh, so if you play the Blues game, you're going to see a guy in a Blues jersey. Nice, nice, nice. And, uh, and if he's not in a Blues jersey, and he played for the Blues at some point, <laughs> they don't like him very much. <laughs> that, that, that tells you quite a tells you quite a bit. That'll be another indicator. That's another tell, as you would say. Uh, who are the, uh, you said you'd have a lot of coaches? Who we got uh, behind the bench here? Uh, I th we have uh, Quenville and Holly. Oh. And Shanny's coming now. Wow. So Brendan's coming. So, you know, there'll be some laughing and some, of course, some bitching because all these black there. And then on the other bench, we got, uh, we got Granado and uh, it's coaches. Coach Payton. Oh, Coach Payton. Yeah, Sean Payton from. That's uh, right. And he's been trying to skate. Eh? He figures if he crams eight sessions into a month. <laughs> He's going to be able to play with the NHL guys, and then, and then he probably won't be able to golf all summer. And then Garth Brooks will be uh, coaching with P Coach Payton. How about that? Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah, that's good. That's uh, good. He's a good dude. When you were in here a couple of weeks ago, Chaser, uh, people were like, man, when can I get tickets? How can I get tickets? Yeah. Uh, let's revisit that. Uh, let the audience know how they can get tickets for this. This is, again, Friday, April 5th yeah. at Centene. Uh, Ticketmaster's got the tickets. Ticketmaster. Um, yeah, and if uh, you know if you inquired about doing some kind of community package or whatever, then they would point you in the right direction with Bruce Affleck at the office, and he would. He's done. We've done a lot of stuff with people where they bought community tickets, and we bought them for first responders. We bought them for um, different people from the Siteman staff who work so hard. Um, different different folks that the Warrior Program, yeah. uh, the uh, military program. So. There's, if you weren't if you weren't able to make it and you wanted to purchase tickets or you just wanted to make a donation, there's a link to just make a donation. So um, we're doing great on the tickets and we look forward to having some laughs. It'll be a little different because it'll be a halftime show instead of a three period break, mm -hmm. and we'll have some of the entertainers sing. Dirk Bentley's going to sing, and nice, Trevor nice, Rosen's nice. going to sing, and and uh, we'll have our house guy that plays at a lot of our events, uh, Craig Ninos, who jacks we get to a lot of our ho hockey events and. He can play and have some laughs and, and uh, played in front of stadiums and played hockey in front of stadiums. Yeah. So it's fun to have an NHL guy that get up and sing. Nice, nice, nice. Barrett, I bet it's amazing how quickly you go from being rookie of the year one year to playing in old-timers <laughs> games the next year. <laughs> yeah, coaching youth hockey and playing in old-timer games, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's amazing how time's uh, flown. Uh, 
I feel like it was yesterday when I came <coughs> in. And, you know, I got Kelly Chase uh, bringing me over to his house and uh, for dinner, meet a bunch of rookies and, you know, have dinner. And then you go downstairs and he pops in one of his fight uh, fight tapes and uh, he goes, watch this, kids. I'll be back in a little bit. <laughs> two, hours, uh, two hours later, he's... Uh, no, the fights are still going on. I just want to let them know it was up for training camp to keep the hell away from me. <laughs> it was pretty funny. I'm, you know, getting into Bobby Plager later on, and, uh, you know, I thought back to that story. I'm like, that is definitely a Bobby Plager move right there. Jason <laughs> trying to get in our heads. <laughs> what do you guys uh, think of the way the boys are playing here? This is, I mean, I, I would have told you a week ago, going in the game against Boston, I'd be like, yeah, you know, this is probably going to be about the end of it. And then they win that one, rattle off four straight. Yeah. I mean, three back. They, well, they got a hill to climb, um, but, you know, it's a matter of, of just coming together and caring. I think I said it before, you know, I, I want these guys to look like they care about being here and not just anywhere in the league. And um, I think you're seeing a little bit more of that. And so, you know, they weren't real good for three two, two periods last night, yeah. but they figured out how to – how to win a game, and again, you elevate your game sometimes to to uh, the team you're playing, and um, they're capable of it. It's a matter of whether they can put it in every night, and that and that'll be the difference. So I love the way they're playing right now. Yeah, some power play adjustments uh, last night, and then that led to the big third period. What are you uh, What are you seeing? Yeah, it's just the you know, like Chaser said, the full buy-in. Uh, you need everybody to be. Uh, you know, kind of on the same page and, and, you know, be prepared to start games. You know, lots of times they get down by a couple goals or, uh, and, and it's just too hard to, to come back or sometimes yeah. they're up by two. Yeah, they, that's been uh, getting them lately. And then they, uh, you know, they kind of coast and, and play it safe and then, you know, that bites in the, uh, in the ass too. Yeah. So it's really just about everybody just, you know, just doing the little things, um, you know, not trying to, you know, get your points or be an individual and, you know, if you need to shut down, uh, you know, the opposing line on, on a given night, that's what you do. If you need to score goals, you got to do that too. I'm curious what your guys' perspective is on this because I feel like they'd be playing with house money if they got in as an eight seed or seven seed. But because of the way Bennington's playing this year, I feel like that might free him up and he might be able to steal a series for him. I don't know if you've experienced that in your <coughs> careers to say, yeah, that, for that could sure. be. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And here's the, it's the experience that goes with it. To just See, get that taste of it for these yeah. guys? Yeah, these I guys mean, are. not really. That's the thing. The thing is, is to have guys that have never played in it feel the emotion of a playoff game because it's a different emotion. And it, and you start clean with your slates clean, and, mm -hmm. and you, you can go out and, and, and you can ruin a team's year, and you can be at the top of the world by doing it. And it's, and it, you know, and then you could be that other team too, you know. So um, having the experience and knowing with a – determined team that's focused uh, to play against and see what their elevated game looks like and then to know what you got to do to get to that game yeah. is important. It's really important to get in. I mean, you get in and that's what you learn. And, you know, I mean, and granted, there's going to be, you know, six guys that aren't going to be with us next year that have already done this. So, um, you know, maybe those are the guys that got to pull us along, but yet maybe they, maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah. I know they really like some of the younger players. Jake Neighbors has looked really good here. Yeah, lately. man, he was And Hofer looks, looks good in the net. Yeah, I agree. How many years away do you think they are from being legitimate contenders? That all depends on the young guys. I yeah. mean, what, what they have in the system and what they do. Because yeah. it's not going to be somebody that's recycled that's going to turn the team around. I mean, yeah, it's all about yeah. the, the mix of experience and youth. And, yeah. if, you know, you look at, uh, you know, Schenner bringing Neighbors, you know, into yeah. the mix and – you know, putting him up at his house and, and you know, you, you could see the way that Neighbors plays is, is a direct relation to, you know, how Shanner's kind of, you know, you know t brought the tutelage and, and uh, the way that he goes to the net, the way that he gets in the eyes, his tenacity, his, his, his drive. And, you know, you need that good mix of uh, veteran guys that could teach the young guys at a quicker pace. And I had guys like Al and Prongs to, to do that to me. And, yeah. um, you know, and you try and pass that along to guys like, uh, you know, Petro and, and Eric Johnson. And so it's really, it's all about the mix and, and the veterans that teach the young guys. And you got to have the right leadership to, uh, to move those guys along at a, as a, at a quick pace. 
You think Shin made neighbors look at his fight videos? He came over. <laughs> Probably didn't have to. You know, they're all over uh, YouTube, TikTok, <laughs> yeah. and all that. Now you don't have to pop in a VHS. He didn't, he didn't, the he didn't, yeah, he didn't put in a pop in a VHS. I can guarantee you. <laughs> <Yeah. that. laughs> what, about, what about the spot uh, Drew Bannister's in here? Uh, what do you think about the job he has done? I know you were a huge Chief fan. Uh, yeah, I don't really think about it. I mean, like, like honestly, like you know, um, that'll come with the wins and. It's a tough spot when you come in to replace anybody, so... Especially a guy as popular as a guy who brought the city its first cup. <laughs> Look, I've said this before. It takes a certain person to coach in St. Louis where people take, take themselves to you. Quenville, you yeah. know, so... So what Drew, Drew does down the stretch here is important because he's, he's made an impact, changed what was going on initially, and then they had a little lapse, and now they're back to winning... But Tortorella is the example I used. When Tortorella, in the middle of the year, went into the Philly press conference and said, I don't know what it is about us. We give the puck away. We throw it up the middle. We don't do what our game plan is. But we got balls. <laughs> you know, one thing you'll never say about our team is that we don't have balls. We got balls. We just go out and we play in your face and we got balls. So he just kept saying that. And these kids woke up in the morning and they read the paper and they want to know if the coach is pissed at them. And they go, I don't know, but we got balls. <laughs> and in Philly, that's all they needed to hear. Yeah. And so all of a sudden, the Philadelphia Flyers became this team that was in your face all the time and played with balls. Yeah. And now that's their identity. What do you think the fans of Philadelphia thought when they woke up and read Tortorella had it? Yeah. That's their coach. Yeah. That is instantly their coach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's St. Louis. Like, that is. I don't care what you say. We've had these guys that stop by and grace us with their presence, the, the Davis Paynes and, the, and the Andy Murrays and stuff like that. And then we have the Plaguers and the Quinvilles and the, and the Barubies, and that's St. Louis. Hitchcock, did you like him, Hitchcock? Did I like him? Yeah, did you think he did a good job? <laughs> uh, well, those are two different things. <laughs> okay. I think we got the answer. <laughs> well, I think he's just, nobody studied the game more than Hitch, you know. Sometimes I thought he was full of shit, but I'm Oh, you can't him. say that! I enjoy oh, what he does, isn't though. A oh. This isn't a podcast. Uh, it's on HD, too. I mean, I think the FCC mm, just doesn't I think check. it exists. Nobody's listening to you guys anyway. <laughs> oh, so oh, God! It's cocky and us. We all took it. No, no, that, too. <laughs> no, I was already in the dump process. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think he... No, he just... He, Hitch just talked a lot, and, and I think that the thing... The hardest thing for both coaches and general managers to realize is that they don't sit in the room. And sometimes, you know, it's just, it, 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 there's just a reason why the things go the way they go. So if in Hitch's case, like he pushed every button to get guys to go, but lots of times guys are in a room going, it isn't going to work, you know? And, yeah. and so that's how I felt about Hitch, but... Again, I used to chuckle because I was just broadcasting. I didn't have to go, but I've heard all the stories, and you know, and, and it's hard because as, as a as a coach or as a GM, if you've not been in the room and can't read on a day to day basis what the general consensus is on a certain player, it's a tougher job. Sure, no, I get what you're saying. And as a, as a player, did it make a big difference to you whether your coach had played in the league or not played in the league? Uh, no, I don't think it's it's about playing. It's just understanding what it goes into playing. Uh, you know, you could not play in the league and, and still have an understanding of, you know, arrest, uh, you know, when a guy, you know, just conversations with the, with the veteran players about when you need time off, uh, you know, when you need a night out to, to go have some beers and, and let some steam off. And so it's not necessarily about playing in the NHL. It's just knowing what a team atmosphere is like. And, uh, you know, Hitch, you know, he'll, he used to tell you, he goes, yeah, you know, I was too fat and lazy at 14 to, to make my, uh, you know, to keep playing hockey. So I decided I, could, I was going to coach. So, you know, Hitch had that side of it to him. He, he knew the game, like Chaser said. But, you know, like lots of times he didn't know what was going on in the dressing room. Right. And tried to play those mind games and, you know, ran me out of town. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do it. And honestly, Sorry. like understanding the game, what's going on in the locker room is the biggest thing. Yeah. 
like understanding if you want to be in St. Louis, or if you care if you're here or in Columbus or, or New Jersey or wherever, is a huge part of playing in St. Louis. Yeah. you got to care about it here. I saw you on uh, Cam and yeah. Strick podcast, and that, that got some attention. Did you feel like there were three or four guys yeah, that didn't want to be there's, here? Yeah, there's... Oh, did I leave it to f three or four only? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, listen, if I was... Uh, Paying attention a little closer, I, I, you know, you could. I'm not. Shouldn't say I'm not paying attention, but I'm not in the locker room. So, but the perception is certainly that, and I just think that um, Army always has a saying: it's hard to eat when your belly's full, and when you've got what you think is a full appetite, and you've ate and you're, you're done. That's it. Whether it's your large contract, or whether it's winning a cup and getting a large contract, or whether it's you know, just getting to the league and thinking that that's enough, and now I've made it. Well, that's not good enough, and and so it has to change. And when it changes, and those guys start winning in there, and guys start pulling other guys along, that's when you know you got a decent locker room. Mm -hmm. But I think there was too many times, and Hitch is guilty of this, making decisions on players that he didn't feel were the right mix in there and he didn't know he didn't know because he was in yeah. yeah like they they isolated him from that kind of you know that kind of stuff and there's certain guys that i that i look at and i just from the outside and go well what we have now and what with what we had we had a guy that cared about it here well, what the hell did we go and get a guy that didn't care about it here and yet he's here and he's doing an adequate job not he's not this player that mm -hmm. we thought you know mate so I, I know you have to make change i know that change is good and people don't like it but i also believe in chemistry that is there you just leave it alone mm -hmm. um one more time for the audience ticket master is where you can go to get the tickets april 5th and this is going to be one hell of an event at centene I'm super excited about it, man. I'm super excited that you guys came in to talk yeah. about it and uh, fired up for the event. And it's going to benefit Siteman and the Jimmy V Foundation. It is, and Siteman's going to get in, get on the uh, research part of it. One thing I wanted to mention that I didn't mention while I was in here, I don't believe, because it, it wasn't kind of public knowledge, is that one of our teammates, Darren Kimball, um, is diagnosed with leukemia. And one of the reasons that he wasn't on the parade with the alumni was because he had found out just prior to that. So he's been dealing with it for almost four years by wow. himself and wow. never told anybody. So this thing is a real bitch to deal with just with 6,000 people supporting you because I can tell, you know, you have your days. But when you try and battle that alone, that's a, that's a hill to climb, man. And so he's finally agreed to talk about it a little bit and not just his family knowing it he know you know people know it now hockey, hockey players are starting to reach out yeah but for a guy that's i mean he's tough as barbed wire but i don't care how tough you are mentally this messes with you the leukemia the treatments he goes through um so it's not just you, you, you know i'm on here with Jax. Jax is Jax is uh my son, Luke, is going to play, who is just coming back from junior hockey, in the game. And, he, and I asked him if he could pick one alumni to be his defense partner. And he, picked, he said, well, Jack's like, is Mr. Jack not available? Like, why wouldn't? Like, that's his guy, right? Bobby Plager is tattooed on his chest in this, on this poker chip that Bobby gave all of the guys that were number five. And so he'll wear... He'll wear um, He'll wall. He'd probably wear a chase jersey, but he'll he'll be he he asked. And Jax is actually at nationals because their team won again regionals both in baseball and in hockey this weekend. Um, his son's teams, but he's going to fly back just for the game and get get back to Detroit to play in the game. So that'll oh, be right. that'll be cool. That uh, Barrett's out on the ice with uh, oh that's with awesome. with Luke. And then uh, I think the other thing that we could you know mention that's kind of new is they like Shanahan and Garth are both going to be in coaching and that's incredible it'll be fun it's huge listen it'll be fun we'll have the three pipers from Canada and Healy the top pipers pipe the teams out onto the ice and they'll do a song at halftime because we're going to have two halves and Dirks will sing a song Trevor will sing a song and then Garth will be up in the VIP room till he said 
uh, listen, I'll do whatever. Ten hours. You need me there ten hours. I said, I need you to play goal. He said, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible, man. I mean, it's so good. What a yeah. tribute. And that's a tribute. You're mm -hmm. not going to say it. Well, what, I mean, you know the people. Oh, Love them, man. Yeah, well, it's amazing that, you know, Chaser's been going through this, but he's, you know, he's also planning the right. you know, one of the biggest well, you know, charity yeah. events in St. Louis. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he, and he does it all because he knows... You know, he doesn't want the attention on himself. He he wants to be able to raise money for the people that have helped him yeah. and the people that are going to go through this uh, after him. So it just shows the character that Chaser has and uh, and all the people coming in. It's it's because of the relationship with Chaser. You know, well, they I, said how much and, and, and how much time do you need? Well, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Job, I'm grateful. Remember, it's Tony Granado coming in. Uh, who's suffering from yes. it? Brian Boyle, who's who's suffering from it, and Troy Murray, who's got cancer. So, I'm not the only Make a Wish kid. Okay, there's a few of them there. There's a few guys that are going to be there that guys have come in to see and and um, be a part of it because of uh, their teammates. So, um, yeah, no, we're pretty grateful that we have that that brotherhood of hockey players. So we'll just do that. Amen, man. It's uh, on Ticketmaster April 5th at Centene and the money going to benefit Siteman and the research and the Jimmy V Foundation. Barrett Jackman, Kelly Chase, thank you as always. Oh, and of course, the, the great Dan O'Neill. Oh, the great that's Dan right. O'Neill. Yeah, he's great Dan O'Neill Jr. We yeah, can't, Dan O'Neill Jr. Yeah, you know, we can't. We don't mistake him with senior because, you'll get, <laughs> because that guy will take all the attention. Yeah, the bogeyman. Yeah. All right, uh, we'll close out the uh, seven o'clock hour here at uh, eight twenty-one. Brought to you by Munganess, St. Louis Acura, and Munganess Burkhardt Alton Toyota. This is TMA presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPN TFM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. Biggie's Restaurant and Bar has been a staple of the community for over 30 years and is serving your favorites like a steak sandwich, waffle fries, and so much more. It's not just the food that's rocking. With a full bar and patio, Biggie's is the perfect spot for lunch, dinner, and a little laughter. Biggie's Original Hours are back. Open 11 a.m. till midnight, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Check out the full menu at Biggie'sRestaurant.com and stop in today. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. If you're seriously hurt in an accident, you'll want all the money you deserve. That's called justice. But there wouldn't be lawyers if justice was easy. No, justice is not easy. It's fought for and it's won. At Brown and Crouppen, we fight for justice every day. If you want some, call 222-2222. Because at Brown and Crouppen, justice is our business. John, I'm so tired of this kitchen. We haven't updated anything since we moved in. The stove looks like it's from the 90s, and the rest is... Are you even listening to me? Did you say something, honey? Yeah, yeah, no, kitchen's fine. We have cabinets. There's food in the cabinets. We're good. Woo! Guys, if this sounds a little familiar, trust me, your wife is probably right. It's time for a remodel. Collier & Thompson is the company to trust. Not just for kitchens and bathrooms, but for any interior remodeling job. Need a new man cave? Collier and Thompson. Office, Collier and Thompson. Bar, you got it, Collier and Thompson. They even do wine rooms and fireplace walls. Collier and Thompson is your go-to source for every design consideration. They carry the best cabinets, appliances, and countertops in the business. And better yet, it's all under one roof. No need to drive around to five to ten different businesses for one job. At Collier and Thompson, they do it all. Their showroom is on Manchester Road in Baldwin, right next to Uncle Bill's Pancake House. Let Collier and Thompson bring your dream remodel to reality and come home to quality. Online at CollierandThompson.com. It's the heart of March and everything's green The bar is as busy as you've ever seen Everyone's Irish and you are too When you tell them more, tell them more, tell them more do When the dry cleaner's lost your only green shirt And getting pinched by your friends is starting to hurt At this point there's nothing else you can do Except tell them more, tell them more, tell them more do It's St. Patrick's Day, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more do Tullamore Jew Irish Whiskey, imported by William Grant & Sons, Inc. TMA listeners have a lot to think through financially. Saving for retirement and college while also paying bills and enjoying life along the way. Call Mark Hanna. Mark works with you to design a strategy to do your finances right. 
It's a straightforward approach that starts with a 15-minute phone call to discuss your needs. Visit evergreenstl.com or give Mark a call at 314-889-0503 today. Mark Hanna offers securities through Equitable Advisors, LLC, member FINRA, SIPC, a broker-dealer. Equitable Advisors, LLC, an SEC-registered investment advisor. Evergreen Wealth Strategies is not a registered investment advisor and is not owned or operated by Equitable Advisors or Equitable Network. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with Seth Goldcamp of Design Air Heating and Cooling, and I have been a longtime Design Air client. What separates you guys from everybody else? It's becoming more common for companies to just get their foot in the door. They try to come up with different ways to upsell. They try to see how much they can make off of a customer as opposed to, hey, we're in there to do a service. We're going to do it well. We're going to do it for a fair price. I don't know how many emails I have received from our listeners who experience the incredible customer service Design Air Heating and Cooling provides. It's Design Air Heating and Cooling online at designairservice.com. This is wide receiver Luther Burton III. Come support NIL and get a quote from my friend James Carlton. Thanks, Luther. That's right. For every quote you mention, Luther Burton III will make a donation to NIL on your behalf. Getting a quote is easy. Just go online at carltoninsurance.net. Call or text 314-961-4800. If you have drivers under the age of 25, if you're seeing rising rates, give us a call or text us 314-961-4800 or go online at carltoninsurance.net. Let's keep the momentum going. Temperatures are finally warming up here in St. Louis, and while that means more fun in the sun, it could also spell disaster for your lawn. Rain equals spring weeds, and now is the best time to get ahead of it. Green Envy has been here in St. Louis for more than a decade, servicing and treating lawns just like they would their very own. Crabgrass can lay dormant for years until the conditions are right, and the massive amounts of moisture we've had is sure to wake up even the oldest crabgrass seeds. Green Envy only uses products that have been formulated from Missouri soil, weather conditions, and turf types, not national generic products that are insufficient and ineffective. Let the experts at Green Envy help you choose the best treatment program for your lawn this season. Phone lines are open 12 hours a day, Monday through Friday and Saturday 9 to 1 to take your calls and answer questions. Call Green Envy today at 636-757-1600 or visit GreenEnvyLawns.com and make your lawn the envy of the neighborhood. The Illinois Recovery Center is dedicated to providing precise and authentic care to those seeking help and treatment. Recovery, it's not just a goal, it's a transformative journey. At Illinois Recovery Center, you'll find an unwavering commitment to provide the support, guidance, and personalized care you or your loved one needs to rediscover a life filled with purpose, strength, and lasting renewal. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Hey, this is Tim McKernan, and I am here with a great TMA sponsor, and that is Longo Biggs Injury Law Firm. And you may hear a bunch of -of out-of-state law firms advertising here and there all over on billboards and so on and so forth. But the thing is, oftentimes their goal is to just settle and move on. And that's not what you guys do. Yeah, this is C.D. Longo, and you hear us talking a lot about maximizing the value of cases. But what does that actually mean? Well, As Tim said, there's lots of personal injury lawyers in St. Louis, and everyone handles cases differently. We focus on getting the highest dollar amount for your injuries, not just getting a resolution quickly. We're constantly tracking all the settlements and verdicts in the area. This helps us advise our clients on whether a settlement offer is too low. And if the amount of compensation being offered is too low, we are happy to file lawsuits and proceed to trial to ensure our clients receive an amount that is fair. Visit our website or Google us at Longo Biggs Injury Law. The choice of a lawyer is an important decision and should not be based solely upon advertisements. Urban Dictionary defines thirsty as purposely, knowingly, and recklessly attempting to gain fame to boost self-esteem. So, are you thirsty? Well, TMA has you covered. Become a part of the TMA Listener of the Month Club. You nominate yourself for a monthly award. And if you win, you get recognition and stuff to help you satisfy that insatiable thirst. We're talking January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, uh, etc. Go to TMASTL.com or the TMA app. Give us your name, a photo, and other pertinent information. Tell us why you deserve to be TMA Listener of the Month. And if you don't want to use your real name or photo, we don't really care. The TMA TMA Listener of the Month. Get recognized just for being you or fake you or whatever. Quenched by Milagro Tequila. Welcome to the brighter side of tequila with Milagro. And the morning after on KPNT HD2. 
You're hearing TMA all day on KPNT HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis, featuring the morning after, live from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m., then a full show replay from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., followed by the best of TMA from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m., and another same-day replay starting at 10 p.m. It's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After. KPNT FM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. Ladies and gentlemen, William Gilman. Welcome back. It's TMA presented to you by Brown and Croup in 8 o'clock hour. Timothy Michael McKernan, Douglas Elvin Vaughn, Kenneth Iggy Strode, the Plowhawk Action Jackson with you on the program. Call in. A lot of people have talked about calling in, but how many have really called in? I don't know that any have. That's right. Callier and Thompson phone line 636-9004-TMA. Uh, many choose to text in to the Jeff Lotman Compass Realty text inbox 314-881-TMA5. You can email in. For our design, air, heating, and cooling, email the day, the morning after at InsideSTL.com. The morning after at InsideSTL.com. And Jackson, let's say you want to wager on Illinois to make a rod in the tournament. Where could you do it? That would be with Circa Sports, Tim. World's largest sports book in Las Vegas is now yeah. in Illinois. The yeah. Circa Sports app is sports betting the way it should be. Big app bets. High betting limits, tight money line splits, and the best customer service around. The best news of all is all you have to do is head over to Illinois if you live here in the St. Louis, Missouri area. But if you already live in Illinois, sign up for the Circa Sports app. The big dance is set. The tournament bracket is ready to go. There's 68 teams all competing for a championship, and I know you want to place some action on them. Obviously, Illinois taking on Moorhead State, but maybe you like a long shot play. Maybe you like Long Beach State, who despite firing their coach a week ago, he's still in charge. <laughs> yeah. How about that, Doug? What about that deal? I think the worst one was the poor Kent State kid. Yeah, that was brutal. Anybody know about that outside no. of Ian Jackson? No. You know about a plowhawk? Yeah, he was... Oh, God. Man. What happened to him? So they, they, they got like a put back with maybe, I don't know, 15 seconds yeah. left to take the lead against Ackwood, and they're about to go to the NCAA tournament. And one of their players thought they were still down one, so as Akron's, you know, trying to rush down the floor to score down by a point, the Kent State player fouls him with 4.8 oh. seconds left, and the Akron player hit both free throws. <laughs> Akron goes on to the tournament. Kent State, which was 500, uh, goes home. They were about to be a 500 team in the NCAA tournament. Could have yeah. kept Illinois State or Indiana State out. And I think he was a former Akron player or previous year trolled Akron during a game, so I know there's some semblance. The coach's reaction is just oh, priceless, yeah. dude. It's like you can tell he's like this poor kid made a huge mistake that he wouldn't make normally, but this is gonna cost me. Yeah, a it lot. cost me a chance to yeah. I mean that's the thing. Those that those moments for those yes. mid majors, that's how they get hired mm -hmm. out of emotion to jobs that they might not necessarily be best for. But we got the guy, we got the dwarling of Borch. Right. There's gonna be some name as a head coach that you're gonna know in five days that you didn't know right now and that guy's probably gonna get hired at take your pick of whatever uh, big-time school. Possibly because of a couple little plays like that. 100%. How do you, not, how do you not know what the score is? Isn't that what scoreboards are all about? Hey, you're on the floor. I mean, everybody's going crazy. It's situation. Got J.R. Smith. Yeah. I feel bad for I actually watched maybe 30 seconds. I watched the end of the Lady Bears-Missouri State game yesterday for the MVC championship. They hit a layup, or they hit a floater with 2.8 seconds left to go to take the lead over Drake. They let him come down and get a layup. At the buzzer to lose the game. Yeah. Michigan State being in is an absolute crime. I don't know how Tom Izzo sneaks his way in with 19 wins. Because he's Tom Izzo. It's insane the teams left out for Michigan State to sneak on in and lose immediately. If you or someone you know have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text <laughs> ILGAMB to 833-234. That's Circa. 2060 That's digital, fast-paced world of digital marketing, making meaningful connections with your audience. Challenging for any business. 2060 digital, sister company backed by a 100-year-old media empire. Uh, that is 2060 digital, part of... Hubbard and 2060 Digital has 12 years of expertise specializing in simplifying the complexities of digital marketing, demystifying the process, and transforming from a challenge into an opportunity. They enhance online presence, optimize digital campaigns, and increase customer engagement. Uh, think your business has room to grow? Let 2060 Digital prove it to you. Visit 1057thepoint.com slash 2060 Digital. Take the first steps toward unlocking your business's digital potential with 2060 
Digital. We are fresh off of Kelly Chase and Barrett Jackman in studio uh, at the tail end of our Munganas, St. Louis Acura, Munganas, Burkhardt, Alton, Toyota, 7 o'clock hour. And, well, Chaser did it again. Doug, I don't know who took more shrapnel. Current members of the 2023-2024 St. Louis Blues, Ken Hitchcock, or this show. <laughs> Well, there was there was plenty of discs to go around all this. <laughs> My God! So I so uh, I enjoy Cam Jansen and Andy Strickland's podcast, the Cam and Strick podcast, and I enjoy any time Kelly Chase is interviewed, just because he mm -hmm. doesn't give a damn, and he really doesn't give a damn now. I mean, he's battling leukemia, and he's really going to let it go. But he would have let it go uh, any time. That's what he's been doing all his career. And uh, and he was on with those guys, I think it was last week, might have been two weeks ago. He was on with Spittin' Chicklets last week. Justin Thomas was a guest as well on that uh, episode. And, uh, and he talked about how, I thought he said three or four guys on the Blues just don't want to be here. Um, and, and, of course, that leads to speculation of who besides Jordan Cairo is he talking about? <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and so I wanted to follow up on that while he's in here. And I thought when he started to answer the question that he was going to kind of go, yeah, I shouldn't have said that, maybe, you know. No. And instead he goes, oh, did I leave it to only three or four? <laughs> and that's going to be a whole situation today. Well, maybe those numbers will dwindle down now that they still have a chance to get in the playoffs. If we can just stay hot, Tim, we can win this baby. You think they can hoist the chalice? Why not? No, I don't think they can hoist yep. the chalice. I think I it's the possible odds to get in the that. playoffs. Absolutely. Four points down now with about what, I will be pulling to for play, it. something like that. I yeah. almost have to. That's the only way Stillman makes money at the end of the year is they get in the playoffs. Well, that used to be the case, but I went to the game again yesterday. It, it doesn't matter... What night of the week, who the opponent is, where they are in the standings, that building is packed every night. Every night it's packed. Couldn't you see Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City just sitting on his nice lounge couch going, oh, the Blues are on? Well, possibly. He doesn't get Bally's. Bailey's. <laughs> uh, Doug, if you want to throw a $100 bet on the Blues to hoist the chalice, yeah. you will be paid $17,500 <laughs> when they do. Well, that that doesn't seem like enough from where they're at. Not even in a playoff spot yet. Yeah. Uh, if you they just get to the Western Conference and then they're vanquished by, let's say, the Panthers or the Hurricanes or the Bruins. Uh, well, how about this? You still get fifteen thousand dollars if you bet a hundred dollars for them to win the Western Conference. Oh, that's a better bet. Have they moved up from that three point six to make the playoffs? I would think they have to. I was looking at money. It was uh, it was like 5.7 as of yesterday morning, and I haven't looked at it since. I'll look at it right now, though. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Blues' chances to make the playoffs poor money puck. Something must have happened. I guess Vegas winning yesterday against the Devils because they went down 4.9%. 4.9%, .9%, 4 .9%, Doug. Uh, 0.9 for, no, let's see, winning the cup. Percentage of winning the cup for your St. Louis Blues, zero. Hi. Hey, come on! <laughs> Can't be zero. Come on, we're better than a zero percent chance. That's what it is. What are you? No chance to win. The <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> now, if the Blues beat the Avalanche tomorrow, their chances double. The Avalanche, nine point four percent chance of winning the Cup, hundred percent chance of making the playoffs. There you go. Do with that. What well, you want. we need LA and Vegas to lose a few games. That's correct. And to just stay hot. Yeah, I think yeah, Vegas has a game in hand. Well, and they're four behind. Mm-hmm. Three. We can still win this, baby. Uh, let's see. I uh, posted a Gallup poll, right? You said it would be a no. Gallup? No, it isn't unless it's done by the George Gallup organization. Do you like or dislike? Oh, I miss, I didn't even I did this while doing the show, and it looks terrible. Do you like or dislike of the St. Louis Cardinals? <laughs> I'll go back into Twitter retirement. Contract extension of Ali Marmol. <laughs> they should have an edit button on Twitter. I think they... Oh, they don't? I don't know. No, they didn't use for years. They didn't. I think well, if, if you, you pay. pay. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. I think God. Elon's like, this that's is a feature for you. Uh, anyway, 90% disapprove. So yeah. that's, that's through 574 votes. But maybe the wording of the question ruined it. You should have demanded people who liked it explain what they liked about it. Yeah, exactly. What did you say that you thought, yeah, this is really nice? There's absolutely sure, no like, reason. I'm sure like 2% of those are just saying, you know, like just to... Do it. And the other ones are really diehard Cardinal fans that everything they do is right. Yeah, probably. Well, I would consider myself a diehard Cardinal fan, but I also just don't like 
spew BS. But just because somebody likes it doesn't mean that they're spewing BS. Also, I should say that. I'm not, it could you know. be Boy Scouts trying to earn their rights holder merit badge. <laughs> <laughs> right Don't get it quickly badge. with that. Like, yeah. Uh, Doug, I made reference to a billion different uh, lead story options. We've talked a great amount about uh, the Blues with Kelly Chase and Barrett Jackman and the four-game winning streak avalanche tomorrow before they go out on the road and take on Ottawa in a game that you would like to think they would have a good chance of winning. And then another Saturday with the Minnesota Wild. And I think that will be three or four Saturdays where they'll be taking on the Wild. Uh, and uh, see where things stand here, as you made reference to. You need to see Vegas and the Kings and uh, the Nashville slow down a little bit so the Blues can catch. But with that all established, uh, also the Cardinals and Ali Marmol, that decided to be the lead, taught college basketball. Illinois went in the Big Ten tournament, three seed, uh, as we talked, NCAA tournament. Uh, and that is presented to you by the great James Carlton of the Carlton State Farm Insurance Agency. But we haven't talked doggies yet Ooh. and my oh my six goals on saturday in carson yeah. california los angeles was a buzzing with the doggies mm -hmm. and the galaxy and i think they were buzzing because of this call doug take a listen i'd like to hear it hit the lever please delgado playing one over the top skips to the end line from the corner paint sill center oh roman Berkey! stones jovalich pedals one away oh roman Berkey! altering that shot like it's a kate middleton mother's day photo <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good <laughs> Yeah. Topical now. Mm -hmm. now we... I like that. I also like the way his voice inflection changed <laughs> completely when he goes into his routine. <laughs> and you said it, routine. <laughs> but it's okay. It's a good thing. That's making Nash. That's uh, that's going a little viral. That yeah. that call. People, yeah. There's a buzz. There's a real buzz. Is there a real buzz about the call? Uh, awful announcing picked it up. I don't know how much of a buzz that would be, but people uh, took notice. It seemed like on Twitter. How about that, Doug? I know she altered a photo. What did she do exactly? Well, she didn't. I, I, I think the Royals, the people were concerned as Kate Middleton, what happened. She hasn't really made a public appearance or anything for four yeah. months, I think, or since Christmas. And so the Royal tweeted out this photo. Oh, hey, she's okay. First of all, the trees are green, and mm -hmm. it's the middle of the winter, and nothing has bloomed there in England. And also they found about 15 discrepancies in that one photo. So now the conspiracy theories are rolling, and I think they just released another one with the Queen and all the grandkids, and there were 25 discrepancies, and clearly two pieces of fabric were, like, webbed together in multiple sections. Well, what are they hiding? I, we don't know, Doug. That, that's why it's topical. So how's that tied into a Berkey save? Because he altered uh, the shot. Altered like the they shot altered like the they picture. altered the photo. Oh, the key okay. word is altered. That was a, that was a great save. That was a great. That was so much fun to watch that game. Yeah, six I mean, goals my God, insane. it was six goals, and it really could have been like six to five. Yeah, and both, they were uh, without Lewin and Parker too. right? Both teams with uh, incredible opportunities. Yeah. Uh, in this case, the doggies were up three to two, and uh, and then gave up a goal in extra time. But we saw them get one in extra time a couple weeks ago. But uh, in this case, Doug, uh, the doggies uh, still undefeated in the MLS season. Yeah, bicycle kick. Yeah, how about goal. that? That was clean. That was really good. You like that? Did you say that was clean, Doug? Or I, I don't say it's clean. I just know it's all part of the beautiful game. Kind of felt good to yeah. get out of a draw. Roman Berkey was nuts. Is he the best tender in the league? He was last year, wasn't he? He's, he's performing just like he did last year. His reaction time on a few of those, yeah. you're just like, how in the hell is that even humanly possible? He, he could, he, it seemed like he had the second one saved, and it just went right under him. He was going. They scored out. six goals and tied? Yeah, three three. <laughs> oh, combined, they had combined. six goals. <laughs> I just heard Tim say six goals. I just figured that St. Louis scored six. But you don't like the announcing? <laughs> no, I never have. <laughs> oh, it's kind of clever, isn't it? Not really. <laughs> uh, this is where Brian Henschen and Iggy are actually on the same page. Doug, you know he's monitoring the Colts. Yeah. Uh, he says, it's going a little viral. All he had to do was tag a dozen different people and whore himself out on social media. Inorganic, not unlike most of his shtick. Oh. Sup, Ken? It's a Brian Henschen. Come on. Yeah. You guys have an alliance now. Did he tweet it out in hashtag Kate Middleton? Then you'll get likes. He always tweets out like his... Did he tag a bunch of people, though? Uh, does not look like it. I, I'm, I'm looking through his Twitter right now. It does not seem like he... Yeah, I wouldn't think that was... He retweeted the awful announcing picking up his call. 
if you consider that whoring yourself out. No, no. I don't. No. He's trying to build a brand. So I have to disagree with Brian Henschen on him. this particular, even though I'm a big fan of Brian Henschen. Yeah, you like his Colts coverage. I really like his Colts coverage. I like how he uh, gets down and uh, you know covers the team real close. I like his writing style. Nice. <laughs> um, Craig Rutledge, who works at the station, takes care of my uh, email and phone. <laughs> take take care he, of his email and his phone. Couldn't well, possibly do that on your own. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't no. figure it out. Once a month, i got to go figure it out. And he does it. <laughs> um, it just says sign in, and I can't sign in. Um, well, they do that to... We all have to do it. I know, but for some reason, I sign in, and it makes me put a code, and I put the code, and it says, what's your password? I say, I don't know my password. Write it it's down. already in. Next time you go to Craig Rutledge, write down No, the when password. I sign in, I put a password in. And then it says sign in, and I put the password, and it does... Well, it just worked a minute ago. Anyway, I can't do it. <laughs> Is it possible you're accidentally typing in the wrong password? No. Missing a letter or something? No. Because um, I have to give him my password, and he types it, and it works, so I don't know. Because he's typing it incorrectly. Either way, oh. it takes him like 30 seconds. Um, but he posted on his page the other day, going off on uh, Zanaboni, saying this guy's a hack or something like that. Said, this isn't going to go over well. Who Ash. posted it? Craig did? Yeah. So we're talking Craig Rutledge's fa you're, Facebook You're talking page. about his Facebook post? <laughs> yeah. But what, are we, what, well, are we what, what are we talking about? You look on fine had you not said it on the air. What? <laughs> he, he put it on Facebook like he's hiding it? You have to be friends with him to see yeah, it. He's just, a, he's just a private citizen <laughs> who works behind the scenes here. Well, I'm sure he doesn't Dumper. care. <laughs> oh, somebody else heard it. He just posted it on his personal well, like, Facebook like, those are personal <laughs> posts that, like, are just <laughs> yeah. for his friends. This yeah. is, like, 10,000 people yeah. listening right well, now. Well, I guess they I would hope it's the over. I guess they weren't great friends because they all <laughs> trashed him for it. Um, well, from for the other ninety minutes of the broadcast, do you think he does a decent job? I think he's a good broadcaster. He doesn't need the shtick, <laughs> and it's, it's just a four-second <laughs> cut line after a yes, goal that you know, that's it, it takes away from what he's doing. I think he's got a good voice. I think he's a good broadcaster if he just did it normally. But to throw that stuff in and make it up and have cue cards and yeah, it's goal and <laughs> and, and and Middleton is save. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's just <laughs> happy. He doesn't need it. I mean, it was fun when the Florida Panthers guy did it. I just stealing that guy's stuff. I don't know. I think it's kind of entertaining. To each his own. Yeah. It's just about entertainment. I know it is. It's just not, I don't find it entertaining. Okay. Uh, now, this is interesting. KG in O-Town is saying Craig got brought up because Craig and Drew must have worked their magic for the month since there was a company-wide email sent out during the Chase segment. That's from KG and O-Town. Yeah, I did. So what? <laughs> yep. It went down. I, see, I just now yeah. see it. Yeah. yeah, God forbid. It was for charity and see if anybody wanted to join the Mega Meyer Foundation trivia night. Sorry I bothered you. Oh, no. Uh -oh. oh, no. We got ourselves a crest. <laughs> oh, and I said my email works. <laughs> it doesn't work once a month. It comes up, sign in, and I go to Craig or Drew, and they fix it, and I'm good for a month. Yeah. So I apologize if that bothered you. I do believe in charity, and I do believe in giving back to the community. Mm -hmm. I do, too. So I just go score right by that KG. I don't expect to see you there. Oh, gosh. Now, how that will happen, we haven't yet worked out, but I do believe in it. I worked it, it out. <laughs> Doug, here's the deal. Okay. You go into Glenn Betts Jewelers, and you say TMA, and they say, oh, your price was... Thousand dollars. Let's say thousand dollars. Thousand dollars. No, 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 no. Now your price is eight hundred fifty dollars because it's fifteen percent off at Glenn Betts Jewelers. When you let them know you are a T M A lister. That's right, Glenn Betts Jewelers online at glennbettsjewelers.com. G L E N N B E T Z Jewelers.com on Manchester, a mile east of the I two seventy and Manchester exit into Pear. They are having a T M A promo that is huge. I can't believe it. 15% off when you go into Glenn Betts Jewelers and tell them you're a TMA listener. So even if you're going, oh, I don't really have a need right now. My girlfriend, my wife's birthday is until November. Or eh, Mother's Day is still, you know, a month and a half away. Whatever. <laughs> Christmas, whatever. Get the jewelry now. Get 15% off and then hide it away. Sure. 
Squirrel it away if you have to. That's the word. That's the word. At Glenn Betts Jewelers. G L E N N B T Z Jewelers dot com. And then you can go and just get them a gift just because. That's a high equity play. Uh, so it doesn't even have to be the birthday, the anniversary. Just because. Glenn Betts Jewelers dot com. 15% off when you tell Craig or David or anybody in the store that you are a TMA listener. Sweet mother of mercy. How can you not do it? It's Glenn Betts Jewelers. Send your emails in for our design air heating and cooling email today. Comes your way in about uh, an hour. The morning after at InsideSTL.com. Design Air is online at DesignAirService.com, the official HVAC provider of TMA and the Tim McKernan Show podcast. Seth Goldcamp is who Doug goes to, who Iggy goes to, it's who I go to as well. Seth's a wonderful gentleman. Fourth generation at Design Air Heating and Cooling. And they do a wonderful job. And, Doug, we had to turn the heat back on this morning. I we were told up. the winter was over. Remember that? Wow. 28 degrees right now. Well, what's it going to be today? 28. What's it going to be today? It's 28 right now. What's going to be today? Doug, what's going on? It's, what do you mean? It's 28. It's going to be close to 50. That's not winter, is it? It's winter uh, right now. It's high of 42. Yeah, yeah. It's not even going to be close to 50, I have to say that. It may not even get to 40. Uh, tomorrow's first day of spring, so who cares? But then it's a high of 50 next Wednesday. Well, it's it's spring. So technically, winter <laughs> is over. It feels like winter out there right now. All right, one day of winter. And then tomorrow's spring, so get over it. Oh, <laughs> Well, Doug, what do you got to say about that? What if people had put away their winter clothing for the season? What now? <laughs> well, you take it out. I had to take a coat out of the closet today. Oh, did you? And put it right back in there. I mean, we're only two months away from 100-degree temperature, so enjoy it. Well, I bet it's not 100 in May. <laughs> I played in two straight uh, member guests with Tim in May. It was 100 degrees. Oh, come on. 100 degrees in May? Isn't the member guest in May? Uh, second weekend in June, Father's Day weekend. Oh, I thought it was May. Okay, my bad. <laughs> We're three months away from 100 degree weather. <laughs> hey. How long was that? <laughs> <The> kind of... <laughs> I thought it was in May. <laughs> no, I bet it's... I wonder if it's ever been 100 degrees in May. <laughs> uh, Arbor Day won the Milagro Tequila Texture of the Year last year. And he says, I know we're all trying to be nicer to Ken as he dances on the razor's edge of funny and insubordinate, so I offer my favorite thing about him, and that's his ability to make any problem someone else's. <laughs> Certainly, any man with any inkling of self-respect would be above needing monthly help in logging into their work email <laughs> or getting rid of their smoke-infused Hoosier garb, but we're talking about Kenny. It's back of the shed time, boys. Oh. He's got mental rabies. That's from Arbor Day. What's Gosh. mental rabies? Rabies. That was harsh. I don't know what that means. Mental rabies. Well, all I do is hand him my phone. He clicks it three times and it's fixed. It it, it takes them no time at all. <laughs> I can't do it. Can he walk you through the steps so that you don't have to keep repeating this Why every month? Why do you month? care? Well, I want to make it easier on him. He doesn't care. When I, when I text him, he goes, oh, that time of the month? He knows. <laughs> that time of the month. Well, it's just nice to be self-sufficient. A Independent. A little late for that. Okay. Yeah. Well, computer issues can get us in our advanced age. That's for sure. Well, I know what I'm doing. It just doesn't work. I'm <laughs> 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 going on the back <laughs> of the road. The segment title. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great right there. <laughs> I mean, I'm doing the right thing. It's just not coming up. I was trying to give you a little bit of a leash there <sighs> to know that, you know, when you get older, the computer's a little harder to operate than when you're younger. The kids grow up with it in their hand from the time they're four years old. It's harder to learn it when you're 60 something. Yeah, electronics is, is hard for me, too. Yeah. Like when the guy brought, uh, one of my friends said, I got like five CD players laying around the house if you want one. Sure, if you got nothing to do with it. And the next day he showed up, he goes, didn't even tell me he's coming over. He just knocked, he's got four speakers. And he hooked up the speakers. I wouldn't have had an inkling of how to hook up the CD, how to hook up the speakers. When I moved, I had my niece's husband come over just to fix my, just to set up my computer and my TV. I had no clue to do any of that. You can't set up a TV even? No. Can't plug a computer in? Well, there's all kinds of things. There's four or five wires you're going to plug in. 
<laughs> well, well, I got I got the lamp the laptop. You can figure home. it out. That's not working because you know I don't know how to do it. These things do come with directions too. <laughs> well, the computer doesn't have directions. Sure, it does. Either way. <laughs> I have somebody uh, do it for me. Did you get that Apple laptop working ever? Well, were you listening? I just said I got the laptop, and that's not working either because I can't oh. get the screen open. Can't get the screen open. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm afraid we're, we're at two. You can't like, open it up? Yeah, like at a certain point, there's like, I can try uh, to help, but if we can't even get into the laptop itself, uh, we're, we're in a tough spot. I'd love to get see tech support in Apple. You come in there to the mall, you wait in line, you go, I can't get this screen. <laughs> and then they just open the lid of it. No, there's something up there that I... It, I can't X out of it. Normally, you can X out of stuff or go back a page. I can't. I click back. Try turning the computer off. Yeah. Turning it yes, back on. Yes, that's what I do. When I used to have to call AOL in, in Indonesia every week. You think it's got viruses <laughs> on it now because of the porn sites you visit? I haven't even been on the computer to, to download porn yet. He's <laughs> about. <laughs> 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 My daughter's five and can do all this. <laughs> Jesus, that's from Larry Thornton. Doug. I doubt that. <laughs> All right, have your daughter come to the station next time I have to sign in my computer. Left back away. Next, next time I have to sign in my computer. Come off also. Let's see if she can fix my phone. Br bring the laptop in here, and one of us will get you going again. Wouldn't that be worth it to have that? You've got yes, a $1,500 in. laptop computer and you've never used it? I'll bring it in tomorrow. Okay. I'll let you do it. How about that? I'm going to bring it and let you do it. No, you'll try, but you won't be able to do it. I, probably not, but I'll try. And if I can't, someone else here will be able to help. <coughs> I'm going to bring it in tomorrow. If you've got a great laptop there. You might as well use it. When you open your first porn site on a laptop, you can just sit on your lap. You will not understand just how amazing it is. Well, I can't. But, oh, I can't. beg your pardon. <laughs> I can't sit on my lap and take care of myself at the same time. Oh! Like so much to clip off. I like Could to there put possibly it, be other uses uh, for a computer? I like to play the balancing on the shin technique or putting it on wow, the Wow, that is impressive. Yeah. I don't move that much. Well, like you sit with your back on the on your. So like I have back a back rest, back. yeah, probably a couch. And then you put it on your shins. Feet up, <laughs> uh, on an ottoman, <laughs> yeah. and angled correctly, so you don't have Why don't to. Why don't you like... just use your phone? <laughs> <laughs> you can That's balance a... a laptop on your shins. <laughs> it's for the bigger screen, Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, you want the bigger experience. This is odd. <laughs> The sound is nonetheless. Good. We're gonna get Iggy You're like a Cirque du Soleil performer, <laughs> just trying to take care of yourself. No, yeah, right sound. in front of the rain camera. It's sound sound good. Good. Just peek on in. <laughs> if you like the dirty talk, the sound isn't as good on the phone. Oh, for heaven's sakes! <laughs> I like when that said all breathy. <laughs> <laughs> it was well thought out too, because I actually hmm. agree with Iggs. But you have another computer at home, right? You got a desktop or something. Yeah, yeah, and that works just fine. Yes. Okay. My bro my niece's husband. Look that up. There's got to be a, there's got to be a title for that. Your niece's husband could it be niece niece in law? I, I, I don't think nephew. so. You know your sister's husband, brother in law. Every time I talk about Jeremy, my niece's husband. That's got to be. Could you just say your nephew? No, it wouldn't be your nephew. That's not my nephew. Well, yeah, but like nephew by marriage, maybe. Yeah. Could that be the title, well, nephew I'm by start marriage? I'm going to calling him niece in law. How about that? There. Well, but he's not a niece. Work. Oh, he's my niece's husband. So he's, he's right, a well, nephew by marriage. My sister's Steven husband is my brother. <laughs> he's not a brother-in-law. He's not my brother. No. Brother-in-law. <laughs> yeah, Stephen Time wants a Brooklyn in live read? That is like I was saying ASAP. I was saying cutting into programming. Yeah, if you're in need of sheets, make sure you go to New York. Uh, Mr. Lick says, April 28th, when I'm done teaching you how to golf, I'll also teach you how to unlock your phone screen. Craig, you have the patience of a saint. Doug, that's from Mr. Lick, Iggy's first-round opponent in the J. Randolph Jr. Fan Page Club Champion. Well, he took a big game for a 22 handicap. Boom! Oh, gosh. And he usually Drew fixes my phone. <laughs> Drew and Craig, <laughs> they're going to be emailing in today. <laughs> I like how you just put Gre Craig's <laughs> private post just absolutely on blast. <laughs> no, it wasn't on blast. I agree with him. But I was the only one that agreed with him. Lux, Lux uh, really, lo she loves the soccer. Now, where'd that come from? <laughs> because that, Lux that made me shake. I looked around to see if anybody, if I missed something. No, because Lux wasn't happy with this post either. She loves, she loves Joe. <laughs> Tim was looking for the on-air I light. was. I was like, I must have missed Lux coming up. <laughs> no, she's a big soccer fan. <laughs> and she wasn't happy with his post. She's, she's a big Zanaboni guy. Yeah. 
Who is it? Oh, you. Me and Craig. Yeah. Panels one away! Oh, Robin Berkey! Altering that <laughs> shot like it's a Kate Middleton Mother's Day photo. How he says Middleton like is so proper. Like, I don't uh -huh. even know if you could actually try to say it that proper. Mm -hmm. Well, he changes Middleton. his voice when he gets the card. Oh, panels and a Kate Middleton post. Uh, that shot like it's a Kate Middleton mother. I mean, Middleton is so perfectly said. <laughs> what is the panels thing? You mentioned panels. What is that? Doug? Paneling it away. Like paddling it away. Paddling it away. But he said paneling. He said panel? <laughs> I think so. I what does that mean? Said, play the clip again. I think he said paddling it away. I, said panel. I don't know if we need the clip again. We're going to hear it one more time <laughs> one more now. Time. <laughs> All right, we'll give it a shot. I want to know what paneling means. Paddling it. From the beginning. Paddles one paddling. away. Yeah. Oh, that's no, paddle. My bad. Bert. He said paddle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Siders, who is not your opponent, but I guess he's working with Mr. Licks. They're the My misters. That's yeah, Jackson's opponent. Says, Ken, when are you going to update that gin? What's wrong with your gin? I don't know. I let my uh, Metropolitan Golf Association membership lapse. I see. So... Mr. Mr. Siders is protecting the field. Well, it was 17-6 last I checked, so that's what it's going to be. Are we getting Craig and Drew in on this to get the grant? <laughs> is that what I need to do to get a gin? I have to join? Doug, I don't have one either. <laughs> Just say you're a oh. 20. Nobody's going to... If you want one, Doug, you can you go to this website. It'll take you about five minutes. And then that. how many rounds do you have to play before you have a handicap? I think 10. I don't, I'll never get that in. I think I they can start calculating earlier than that. I think. I could be off on that. Well, I but I, a, they take 10 scores. Well, I could be a cheater. I could say everybody thinks I'm like 20.2. So I could say I'm a 20, but I'm not. I'm a 17.6 was the last one Metropolitan had up there. There you go, Doug. So I'm going with 17.6. Jackson, you were accused uh, when we were playing a money game of not, and then you hadn't updated your gin. I have. Uh, but you have updated it since then? Yeah, because if you let it, if you like have a card on file with them and then you get rid of that card or it runs out right. like mine did, uh... They cancel your account, so I had to renew it, but it takes two seconds to renew So you're good. I'm back, yep. So Mr. Siders, Jackson's good. Yep, 10.0. 10.0. You went up. Yes, yeah. Aren't you left to Rough. feel pretty guilty, though, if you have a high handicap and then you turn in a good score? No, because and a handicap is kind of meant to show, like, what you can do. I know, but then, but then they don't believe you. Well, you're a sandbagger. Shots Mark Milton, I don't know where. Oh, wow. I'm not. But if, if I ever figured out my putting and my chipping, I could go from 95 to 85 in one day. That that's, wouldn't be That's possible. believable. The, the issue is more like when it's a, a, like a, there's money involved or like a, a member guest type thing. That's when it becomes famous when like a 10 handicap shoots around even or something. That's not, yeah. that's not really within the realm of uh, reason. So that's when you're talking about somebody winning, you know, ten fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 doing that crap. That's a different deal. And then you wind, that person usually winds up in the river. Mm. Yeah, or it's like the pump and dump. <laughs> like their last five scores are like all in the 90s and they come out and shoot right. 75. So I'm playing an event coming up in a couple of months and it's, it, they, they tried to avoid it by whatever your lowest index was over the last 365 days. So then that way you can't do what Jackson just references, the pump and dump. Do you like that? Yeah, I don't like, like a it. big no. money game. Right. I played the other day and there was nobody else on the course so we had all kinds of time. And we, we played a few holes with a one-person scramble. Ever do that? Where you get to hit two balls, and you pick, oh, yeah? pick the best one. But if you hit the second ball, you got to play that one. But basically, you get two shots at every hole. Right. And it's amazing how many tap-in pars you get. Is that right? It supposedly shows you your true potential. This is what you could do if you hit the shot every time. I've always said one of the rules would be, you know, a lot of people play the breakfast ball, two off the first tee. And they'll hit a good drive, about 240, 250, whatever, down the middle. And I'm going to hit another one. If you hit a second one, you play your second one. I think I'm with that. That's why I, I, if I'm in the fairway off my first tee, I, I'm, I'm, I'm satisfied. Because then you have nothing to lose. I already got one in the fairway, and I'm just going to try to bust this one. Yeah, so, but if you yeah. don't get, like, a range session, you know. Well, it's your fault for not getting there early. Yeah, what if you don't have one? <laughs> Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, be specific to which one. <laughs> yeah. Jackson, uh, did you post your score from this past Saturday? Yes, but only the front nine because I don't remember what I shot in the back nine. And uh, Jin what now. Sandbagging. <laughs> no, trust me, it would be the opposite. It would be vanity season. Um, Jin now, when you upload a nine-hole score, it uses it as an 18 as opposed to waiting for a second nine-hole to connect it with, which is very beneficial. 
Because oftentimes you'll play nine out of necessity. So you only uploaded the, you only posted the nine? Yeah, but then it like averages based on handicap for the rest of the round. So because if I would have posted the number I shot Saturday, my number would have flew up. And I don't think I'm. Well, as bad probably as just wouldn't have counted against it. You can have outliers. Yeah, I mean it was still bad. Like it's not like I posted like a good nine hole score, but it averaged. Well, even great players had problems on Saturday. And PCC was up on Saturday too. Doug but, PCC was up on Saturday. Playing condition. Uh, don't, don't ever say that on this show again. That's an important part of the, the handicap system. It's the PCC. P, I don't want to hear it again. The windy is all get out. At Peagley Country Club? That's correct. Mm. Uh, Harris's brother Master is on a crusade right now. Plowhawk, I don't know if you see that in there. Uh, I don't have the text line open. Okay, he well. says uh, he this guy plays in these events that require a gin or requires him to be a fan page member, and yet he isn't either or doesn't have either. And he has sent a screenshot of Ken Strode not being in the gym. But the thing is, this I just wouldn't told even, you why. And it oh. wouldn't happen without the show. Like, we wouldn't have this event without the show. So I think everyone in the show is automatically in. <laughs> Look, Tim will never have me back to the member guest. And I play in the fan page. You played in two of them. Yeah, but you'll never have me back again. Well, I have a lot of... I know people. you have a lot of friends. Well, I don't that's something I have a lot of friends. Were you whining just then? <laughs> no. I'm He's, saying I'm not that was, a, that was a good meta <laughs> play. Like he wants to back in. And no, I'm kinda... not going to spend money with the, with the Metropolitan Golf Association just so I can say I have a handicap for the Fan Page Club Championship. How much is it? Uh, like 25 bucks a year. But that's all I get as far as handicap. I get nothing else out of it. It's a good money maker for them. For me? How's it a money no, for maker them, for me? For them. <laughs> well, they got enough money. They're not going to bitch about my 25 bucks. So well, I don't I'm not need saying a it's to take them out of business. I'm just saying it's a nice and, little business and, model for and, them. Yeah, it is. Doug, they call it recurring revenue. Mm -hmm. And next year, if you need a handicap, I'll go to Gint. <laughs> okay. Or Grint, whatever it's called. I think we've taken care of it, and I like where we are right okay, now. It feels good, yeah. We're in a comfortable spot. It yeah. looks like everybody, every listener is really excited about I mean, our I have numbers. to give Licks five shots, five pops. <laughs> Plus is 80%. He'll probably get four. I just don't know how, if you have a high handicap, you can never feel really proud about winning anything. If the guy hit a lower score, it, it is a, it is an odd thing when people brag about winning a net it. event when yeah. They, yeah, like what you said, like I okay, can't. I beat him. He shot a seventy five. Mm -hmm. I shot a ninety. Yeah, I got that. There's a shot at the fan page club championship. I have a buddy who does that. He's like, I beat Jax by two strokes. I was like, Well, I gave you twenty pops. <laughs> it's an affront of your manhood, is what it is. Well, that's what handicaps for, so you can play against people better than you and have a It is, but a hundred percent, but it isn't beating them. Right. It's you like playing I mean? one on one basketball no. and starting out eight up. You know <laughs> well I mean? you know I going in, you're better than me. <laughs> but why are they better? why are they better? Well look at the handicap. The guys at two no, but why sure why do they have the lower handicap? Because they're a better golfer. Okay, then that's that's that. Then they're just a better golfer regardless well, then of don't what the play against are. people better than you. The handicap means nothing. You want to play? Nope, you're better than me. I'm not playing against you. It means you go out and you play on a Saturday afternoon against guys that are better than you. At least you have a shot of competing with your handicap. No, I understand the, the don't purpose brag of it because it's you for beat them. gambling huh? purposes. Yeah, don't brag That's because you for. beat them. Huh? Beat you? No, actually, I shot a seventy-two and you shot a ninety. Boy, Harrison's brother, Master Plowhawk. Are, are I see it now. Okay. <laughs> this guy about to have a terrible weekend. What's he saying? Uh, be Indiana State along. <laughs> God, God, he has got his britches so tight. What's he bitching about? Uh, he wants you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he only... well, go ahead, read him. I don't care. <laughs> Pay the money, you cheap Hoosier. It's like twenty dollars, you poor cheapskate. You need a handicap now. You don't need one next year. Pay the money, you poor. Wait, so the rules apply to everyone but Ken? That's what we have here. That's from Harrison's brother, Master. In the last three minutes. Well, being part of the show, you get a few perks, and one of them is I get to play in the Fan Page Club Championship, mm -hmm. even though I left the Fan that's Page a big Club old perk. Championship. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the huge perk I get from being on the show. That Front page I don't on glass to... door. I if you win the Masters, to. you get in every year at the Masters, right? If you're on the show, you get Larry Mize. Right. Yeah, but I haven't won. I've never won the Fan Page Club Championship. You know, this is your year? No. I made the Final Four one year. Nice. I don't know. I always lose by a short putt. I mean, I lost to Callahan by missing a six footer. Yeah, I'm sure it was, couldn't have been your fault, to any of these defeats. No. The breeze. It was a good putt against them. Callahan. <laughs> uh, another year I lost to uh, Bill Shack Lady because uh, we played a, a wrong rule. Uh, there it is. I missed, there it is. <laughs> I missed another four. Tom O'Toole with the ruling. <laughs> I missed another five footer on eighteen to win. And even Jay was in the back of the green, going, "Oh my god!" <laughs> and we went to a playoff. And well, a five footer isn't a terrible miss. No, but it was. I yeah. mean, a two footer. That's a different it was five feet. I should have made it. But I missed it. Then we go to a playoff, and the playoff, 
Shaq lady said, uh, no, you don't get a pop here. I said, well, I got a pop in the, when we played on one. He goes, yeah, but in the playoffs, you don't get any pops. I don't know, later, you do get a pop. So uh, he beat me, I think, part of bogey, but I would have got a pop. We'd have tied one to another hole. But You got wronged again. So, just so you bad, actually bad wouldn't have won. You would have just extended. Yeah, but I would have okay. lost that. Hole. <laughs> but you'd have yeah. played better. You'd have won. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Missed a five-footer against Callahan to win a match. Lost that in a playoff with a par. He buried the hole. I yeah. love Iggy, but they, there either, so. he's always... A, the, uh, the last four have started with missing <sighs> the three to five-footers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Those if he wins the tournament, does he get the money since he doesn't have a gin? That's from Harrison's brother, Master Doug. Why do you he care? Is, this guy is Are you this. playing in the tournament, Master I Peter? hope Iggy, our dog, makes a run. Or me, because I don't have money to three of the five. Yeah, I We're not even turning in scores. You I have my handicap. 17.6 <laughs> before it ran out. I will uh, not play a round of golf before then. So it's 17.6. Don't get angry. I can go pay 25 bucks, <laughs> and come the 28th, it's going to be 17.6. <laughs> God almighty. Okay. Bragging about beating people in golf with strokes being given is exactly what Ken does. He said he would beat anyone at the office, which is the weirdest <laughs> flex ever with strokes being given one way or another. Anybody and that office. is what caused the issue with Chairman Steve in Wildwood. I've never said I beat anybody in the office. Uh, Shooter McGavin said you did I didn't say it. With pops. I can't, I can't beat Tim. Probably can't beat You could beat me with pops. Why couldn't you Jackson? beat me with pops? But I would never say I can beat anybody in this office. Okay. But anybody can beat anybody if the handicap's well, right. That's the whole point of it. But I wouldn't say this office. But you could. You could absolutely. I'm, I'm giving you 15 or 16 or 17 strokes, so you're absolutely You can't be me. a lemon and say that. <laughs> no, I could. But right. I, I didn't say that. Now, heads up, it would probably not happen. Oh, no. But... but with the pops, of course. No, heads That's up, the whole point. I, could beat, I could beat three of the five. I could beat three of the four. I could beat, no, two. I could beat, I could probably beat Doug and Plowsy, but I couldn't beat you or Jackson straight up. All right. Well, there you That's go. fair and accurate. Occasionally, no town. Uh, I beat him, too. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> I've already drummed him. You'd beat everybody but Tim. <laughs> no, I don't think I'd beat Jackson either. <laughs> I can turn the other cheek on the gin thing, but I just want to clarify everyone is expected to pay the entry fee, right? Just want to get out in front of this. That's from KG and Ode. Mm. <laughs> Do we? Yeah, we pay into the pool. I'm kidding. Everybody has paid the entry fee. And I know if you're going off on me, I pay the entry fee every year. Now we don't pay for golf. Well, I absolutely pay for golf. Well, last year, Sean said you guys are taking care of golf-wise. I think in the first game. round, maybe we were, oh. but I, I don't well, know round I played. Round, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's, yeah, I think I played like two or three But matches. I've always paid the entry fee, so if you're taking a shot at me, just <laughs> kind of stupid. <laughs> there are other people that probably didn't, but... <laughs> I'm going to develop an app to measure everyone's Ken index. It will measure how disproportionate <laughs> an individual's pride is in relationship to their ability to feel any sense of shame. You can Act like a man! Oh. That's some Arbor Day. He's had enough. How should I act like a man? Well, let's say I create a game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. You just see me over the weekend as banty as I was, and I was by myself. <laughs> Why were you banty now? I just, I can't take NBC golf anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine your complex being like, what the hell? And then God that got you upset? <laughs> I'm, tired, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of Tariko <laughs> thinking he's got to be involved in everything. Oh, here it comes again Mike with him. Tirico. Absolute Mike Tariko. Mike Tariko and Joey Zanaboni take it in the same segment. <laughs> I mean, I like Mike Tariko. Seems but, like it. But my God. <laughs> and I guarantee you that NBC Sports didn't say, you know what? We don't have enough Tariko. Let's put two hosts and two analysts in the booth at the same time. Mm. And let Rico take over, or Dan, or Neil be or Dan. But Bam. we've explained this. <laughs> I was gonna say Dan. That, 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 that take was a lot Neil, of sizzle with that mispronunciation. When he's your number uh, one guy, Dan they want him at the biggest events that they do. It's like when Bob Costas would show up at the Kentucky he Derby. Didn't do, he didn't do he play by play of golf. No, but they want him involved. Well, they yeah, want the be number involved. One guy. Go in the studio and say, "All right, let's give a recap," like he always does anyway on everything else. But now he's doing play by play, and he's the and he's the the lead. Host. Okay. When you got Dan Hicks and they're trying to find a replacement for Z Azinger, why? Oh, now we're going to use Kevin Kisner today, but let's go to Mike Tirico and Brad Faxton. 
sitting right next to us hosting the show. That makes you angry? <laughs> yeah, because I want some continuity in my broadcast. Oh, for heaven's wow. sake. He's the number one sportscaster at the network. He's going to get the big gigs. I don't want Brad Faxon. Brad, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think it's a 16-foot putt. And then Dan Hicks, let's go to 17. Kiz, what do you think? I mean... Just give me the guys I know. Don't get angry about this. Back, they had 9,000 people on the course. All right, let's go down to Smiley. Let's go down to John Wood. Let's go down to uh, Nota Begay. Let's go down to, and they got poor, uh, what's his name? at the top, and his rotation through. <laughs> and they got the guy that should be the, the, the analyst, like Kurt Byram. All right, let's go out to Kurt. He's on the course today. He followed two, he had two shots. He was, he's following Matthew Fitzpatrick, who did nothing until hole 16. <laughs> he was on twice. They have six guys following groups. Oh. Four, and guys here he is four guys in the Four guys in the booth. the time of his life. Four guys in the booth. And this had you stomping around your apartment, Yeah, Andrew? I would be surprised if any other person in the world would mad at this. Yeah, because noticed. Azinger, Azinger <laughs> shouldn't have been fired. They treated him like dirt. Paul Azinger defense. Now, I didn't think Azer was that great. I mean, every, what the hell is going on? Everything was, oh, my God, what a great shot. Everything was a great shot. But at least he called people out and was kind of honest. Kisner's like, hey, you've been a buddy with for a long time. Yeah, I know his game. Been a buddy. Yeah, he's been a buddy. He's a good friend. He's a buddy. 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 <laughs> what wow. What are you going to say that you're buddies with everybody on the on the tour? I can't help it. Maybe go play golf. You haven't. You've missed 15 or 17 cuts. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're back in the booth, but I don't know. They need you on that podcast, just spitting this venom. Night. That would be entertaining. You can't pay Azinger, but oh. you got seven guys in the in the on the course. You got four guys in the booth, and Dan Hicks's contract is up this year. I'm sure he's gone. And Tariq will take over the entire broadcast. <laughs> well, he may. So did Tariq on doing one through eighteen? Uh. Yeah, what would you think if Jim Nance is in the in, and you got uh, Trevor Inelman and all of a sudden, <laughs> hey, let's go over here. Another another host and another. Well, Colorado Nance is the number one guy him. at CBS. Though. Well, Dan Hicks is the number one golf guy. I'm now like, he's getting pushed out by Tarico. I think golf on mute is like the move. No, I like I like listening to the people. I think Smiley Kaufman is great. I think, <laughs> I think uh, John Wood is great too. That's all you need, two guys. Why do you think CBS works? What about Dottie Pepper? They have Dottie, <laughs> Dottie, Dottie okay. Pepper is the best. Daddy Pepper is the best. We got a break. I want to. I want to let this breathe. <laughs> but uh, I didn't see this rant coming. <laughs> I did not see it coming. It's just James, stupid. James Carlton has been waiting. Oh man! <laughs> yeah. Oh my! We can break <laughs> for the Schaefer Door Company nine o'clock hour. Uh, that's coming up with the design air heating and cooling email of the day. See if you can beat Blueberry Pop Poppies on a mission this month. Eight wins so far. Buck Swope has two. Jason has one. Send your emails in the morning after at InsideSTL.com for the design air heating and cooling email of the day. This, the morning after, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. The choice of a lawyer is important and shouldn't be based on an ad. If you're seriously hurt in an accident, you'll want all the money you deserve. That's called justice. But there wouldn't be lawyers if justice was easy. No, justice is not easy. It's fought for and it's won. At Brown and Crouppen, we fight for justice every day. If you want some, call 222-2222. Because at Brown and Crouppen, justice is our business. I get asked all the time by people, if I'm in an accident, what should I do? And while yes, you should call the police, exchange insurance information, and take pictures of the scene, all those things are important. But the most important thing you need to do is hire a personal injury lawyer. This is Doug Biggs from Longo Biggs Injury Law. And if you've been hurt by someone else's negligence, don't take on the insurance company yourself. Insurance companies have teams of people and a playbook designed to keep you running in circles so they can pay you as little money as possible for your accident claim. If you don't have a lawyer, they know you can't bring your claim to court, and they will never give you full value. We recently took an offer from an insurance company without a lawyer on the case from $12,000 to $200,000. You can't get that kind of result without an attorney on your case. Even if you don't hire us, you need to hire a personal injury attorney. Check us out online at longobigs.com. In business since the 50s, Collier and Thompson are known for kitchen and bathroom remodels. But they do so much more. If it's an interior remodeling job, Collier and Thompson can probably help. Basements, wine rooms, man caves, bars, accent rooms, fireplace walls, office, you name it. No need to visit five to ten showrooms when Collier & Thompson provides all your needs in their showroom on Manchester Road in Baldwin. Come home to quality with Collier & Thompson. Let them bring your dream remodel to reality. CollierAndThompson.com.
It's the heart of March and everything's green The bar's as busy as you've ever seen Everyone's Irish and you are too When you tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do When the dry cleaner's lost your only green shirt And getting pinched by your friends is starting to hurt At this point there's nothing else you can do Except tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do It's St. Patrick's Day, so what do you do? You tell them more, tell them more, tell them more, do Tullamore Jew Irish Whiskey, imported by William Grant and Sons, Inc. Biggie's Restaurant and Bar has been a staple of the community for over 30 years and is serving your favorites like a steak sandwich, waffle fries, and so much more. It's not just the food that's rocking. With a full bar and patio, Biggie's is the perfect spot for lunch, dinner, and a little laughter. Biggie's Original Hours are back. Open 11 a.m. till midnight, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And 11 a.m. till 1 a.m. on Friday and Saturday. Check out the full menu at Biggie'sRestaurant.com and stop in today. Chow Chow on the Hill is your one-stop shop for all your pet supplies. As soon as you walk through their doors, you and your pet are considered family and treated with superior service and personalized attention. Jessica is the owner and is a certified pet nutritionist and impassioned about educating her clients on the product that will keep your pets happy and healthy. My favorite part about Chow Chow is its connection with All Paws Safe Haven, an organization that helps shelter animals find forever homes. To learn more about Chow Chow, visit CIAOCHOWSTL.com or stop Stop by and tell them Plowsy sent you. The Illinois Recovery Center is dedicated to providing precise and authentic care to those seeking help and treatment. Recovery, it's not just a goal, it's a transformative journey. At Illinois Recovery Center, you'll find an unwavering commitment to provide the support, guidance, and personalized care you or your loved one needs to rediscover a life filled with purpose, strength, and lasting renewal. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Bet like the pros with the world's largest sports book right at your fingertips. Circus Sports is now available in Illinois. Hi, I'm Derek Stevens. I've been a lifelong sports better and I'm the owner of Circus Sports. We're excited that the Circus Sports app is now ready for action. Experience big app bets with high betting limits, tight money line splits, and more. Now you can download, fund, and bet like a pro from anywhere in Illinois. Download your new bookie today at CircusSports.com. If you or someone you know may have a problem with gambling, call 1-800-GAMBLER or text ILGAMB to 833-234. Hey, if you like the morning after, check out Balloon Party on 101 ESPN. HD1, by the way. It's Sports Talk with Tim McKernan and Action Jackson from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. each weekday, right after the morning after. It's the worst name show in the history of radio, but the content's pretty good, so check it out on 101. On ESPN or get the podcast on the TMA app. Urban Dictionary defines thirsty as purposely, knowingly, and recklessly attempting to gain fame to boost self esteem. So, are you thirsty? Well, TMA has you covered. Become a part of the TMA Listener of the Month Club. You nominate yourself for a monthly award. And if you win, you get recognition and stuff to help you satisfy that insatiable thirst. We're talking January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, uh, etc. Go to TMASTL.com or the TMA app. Give us your name, a photo, and other pertinent information. Tell us why you deserve to be TMA Listener of the Month. And if you don't want to use your real name or photo, we don't really care. The TMA TMA Listener of the Month. Get recognized just for being you or fake you or whatever. Quenched by Milagro Tequila. Welcome to the brighter side of tequila with Milagro in the morning after on KPNT HD2. Live from the Michelob Ultra Studios, KPNT FM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. This is TMA All Day. Now, it's the Brown and Crouppen Morning After. KPNT FM HD2, Collinsville, St. Louis. Well, Doug, you're right. Susanna Hoffs, unbelievable. Welcome yeah. back. It's the Schaefer Door Company, 9 o'clock hour on TMA, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. And if you are watching on YouTube, you notice that uh, James Carlton has replaced Ken Iggy Strode, and Iggy is on the phone with Mike Tirico, <laughs> Craig Rutledge, mm -hmm. and Joey Zanaboni. <laughs> Get some things straightened out. In KG, in no town. Anybody else? That NBC golf broadcast has got to be improved, <laughs> or, or frankly, he may not watch anymore. I didn't notice. I enjoyed the golf. The golf oh, was didn't. insane yesterday. It was glorious. I don't know what was going on with 18, but everybody seems so disappointed. I guess they assumed their ball was just going to trundle toward the hole, and it trundle. just didn't. You know, Scotty was like, you know, the, the gift going around. I mean, didn't hit it within 15 feet for the first time of the day. And then who else? Um, Xander there at the end. I mean, everybody just thought it, they were hitting on that right side of the green, right? And it just did not 
Let me tell you Pops something, and I want you to listen and listen good. And I'm oh. talking to all of you know, like when somebody calls the Yizens. Yeah, uh, is that what they well, say in Pittsburgh? Yeah, Y I N Z. Yeah, Yins. That's Yins. what it is. Uh, and in in this group text I have with uh, my golf compadres, somebody said it uh, right before things started. You can have Xander, and I'll take the field, even though he was leading. <laughs> It, there's, he's just one of those guys. Yeah, he can't close. He is, if he's sleeping on the lead, and I, and I had a buddy of mine, Jackson. You were with him, right? I think on Saturday, the Wyndham Clark bet. Doug is Jackson. Jackson still on the show, or is he with Berkey. Park? Berkey, Jackson. He's nowhere to be found. Tim, just gonna take the hour off, I guess. <laughs> Man, this is disappointing. Anyway, a compadre of mine, who I think you know as well. Uh, would have won, not exaggerating this, $40,000 if yeah. Wyndham Clark wins. So that playoff, oh my God. Yes. I'm sorry, what's up, fellas? I'm sorry. <laughs> I, was, I was corroborating the fact oh, that yeah. a friend of mine would have won $40,000. Mm -hmm. Bet him on Thursday. This wasn't like, oh, oh I'll wow. wake up on Sunday. Okay. Bet him on Thursday, and we were playing, and Jackson was part of the group on Saturday. And I said, honestly, I think it would be better for you if Xander Shoffley overtakes Wyndham Clark, and it's just kind of the two of them because Xander's sleeping on a lead. He just, I mean, at some point, maybe he'll break through, but there are just some players who have issues with yeah. that and others who don't. Scotty Scheffler would be an obvious one. Tiger Woods would be the ultimate. I can't speak to Nicholas or Palmer, but sure enough, I mean, he was kind of a, you know, he was there, don't get me wrong, but still, Scotty Scheffler comes from behind like that, and Xander Shoffley's just one of those guys who, to date, when he has a lead late, he has issues. That's just the way that it is. He might be, at this point... Is he the most talented player without a major championship? I mean, I, people would maybe cite Ricky Fowler, but, I mean, he's, you know, it hasn't been a great few years for him. He got it right last year. I don't know. Anyway, point being, my buddy, uh, I can't imagine. I didn't bother to say, how are you doing? You know, or sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, I know how you're doing, and what am I going to say? Especially but when I saw like that putt yeah. go in and out like that, I can't even imagine. Holy crap. I mean, 40 grand. Unbelievable. But, uh, I think the Wizard had a situation last year like that. Yeah, with Shoffley missing like an eight footer. Oh, so he would have won three hundred thousand. He's the constant here, huh? Yeah. No, oh, this my. wasn't. This wasn't. The, this wasn't the Wizard who. This was just. A oh, guy. okay, okay. This gotcha, is a separate gotcha. one of my compadre. This guy just bets. The Wizard is more of a DFS scientific guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. DFS guy. Uh, James, uh, what do you think about uh, the Missouri basketball thing? Just a <laughs> curiosity. He's a big Missouri guy. He's earned himself another year. I don't think there's any doubt about that. Uh, I would hear he might have earned himself an extension. I, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a few more years. Some relief. Mm -hmm. uh, he could be the athletic director now. Yeah, that that's quiet as all get out. I mean, that's that's an odd scenario right there. Uh, I would I would say he's on the warm seat next year. I mean, oh yeah, he, that's that's a historically bad season he just had after you know an incredible first season. So. I was I was hoping we were actually going to break down the spring football game from Saturday. Doug, uh, oh, you were you, you watched were, that? I did not watch a second. <laughs> was it even on TV? Was I it an actual game? So. Were they like throwing through hula hoops and I stuff? I think it's kind of a controlled scrimmage. Oh it's my kind of gosh, it's yeah, it's kind of a joke. But it, it, Eli doesn't take it seriously. It's not like he promotes it as a big competition. They don't yeah. even hit each other. So I mean, it, oh, it, it is. It's what like it is. the NFL Pro but Bowl game or something. Though. That's all Mizzou has right now. There is nothing going well in Columbia outside of promoting their football team. So yeah. that's well, all they you have. know, you talk about the tournament. <laughs> They're not talking about the tournament. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, ILL. Yeah, no, in Columbia. I was I was looking forward perhaps. to. Pull, I will I will pull for Illinois with Missouri's not involved. I pull for Illinois. Some Missouri fans have a real problem with that. I don't know what to say. I pull for St. Louis U. I don't know what to yeah. say. Um, and I was really looking forward to pulling for Providence. Actually, okay. Did you hear Kim English, uh, what he had to say, Plowhawk? Uh, I th Jackson, were you surprised they were left out? Yes. Okay. I was surprised both them and St. John's were left St. out. St. John's, Seton Hall. I mean, yeah, the Big East. How do you East. look them in the eye? Big East yeah. is just a good conference, and they got, like, they didn't get rewarded for that. They got they weren't. Providence wasn't even the first four left out. Our NCAA tournament talk brought to you by the great James Carlton, who's sitting right here. Here's what Kim English had to say about the analytics, Doug. All right. Hit the lever, Plowsy. Aren't as good as what showed up on the court. Uh, yeah, I think the analytics are bullshit, right? Oh. Um, <laughs> I think you could schedule bad teams in your non-league and beat the snot out of them and beat them by 50 and 60. Um, and I think, I think coaching for so long has been a gentleman agreement. I mean, you have a large lead at the end of the game. You know, for health reasons, you take guys out. To get some other guys opportunities to play, you take guys out. Hmm. Uh, but right now, it might be a change in college basketball. We're beating teams by four. Scheduling. 
the B team's about 40 and 50. Is might a woodpecker be, in there? Uh, a thing to do. Uh, but when you get into this league, the analytics aren't going to look very good in league. Mm -hmm. um, because it's so competitive. You're playing against some really, really good coaches. You know, we play at Connecticut, and I think they shoot 40% from the field. We're a good defense. They won the game. They should be credited for winning the game. Um, so I, I, I do think there are some flaws um, in the system. I agree with where he's coming from, especially that first part about, yeah, guys, when they're up by 40 or 25, they, they, they pull players. And then what, they're penalized because the bench does dog crap and a team makes the game look closer than what it was? It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. Do you agree, be. Jackson, or you disagree? Yeah. No, it's not. Do you agree it's with nonsense. what English it's, is saying? It's crazy because it, it's the respectable thing to do when you're up 25 to not run up the score and then to get punished. Mizzou had the same thing last year with their non-conference games because they only won them by a handful of points. It's like, who cares? Like You're just there to win the games and get right. You're testing out offenses. You're trying out new schemes. It's not meant to get out style points to get you into the tournament. They, they talk, like Ken Palm is one of the best ranking systems out there and they just completely disregard it like crazy it makes no sense it makes no sense well you're hopping mad I, I just like when uh kimmy's uh baltimore accent comes back out a little bit like when he says do i really like that well the analytics have ruined sports anyways but the, it, basketball, Zach Eady ruins basketball sports. <laughs> is all about eye tests and like providence should be in and i realize you can pull like you can use all these stats to justify each and every team but them and Seton Hall, and I think Indiana State has a case. I think Seton Hall has a better case. Could they beat UConn, the number one overall seed? I just don't understand how some teams are left out. New Mexico being an 11 seed, I know this is like a crazy weird take, but they're like 25th or something in the Ken Palm ring, and they're 11 seed. Sounds like you see some value with New Mexico. They take a look at they're playing Clemson. They're taking on the Clemson Tigers. Okay. You know? Then they could take on Baywa in the Doug, next they round. Los Baywa. Lobos. They're playing Baywa? Baywa, that's correct. <laughs> They're playing correct. Clemson first, and then they could play Baylor if Baylor can sneak by that, that tough Colgate club. Well, every year we have the same argument. There's 68 teams are in, and we still argue about who is the 69th and 70th, 71st best teams. Is there no system at all that would work? Is, I bet there's no system where there wouldn't still be people complaining that they got robbed. I have a question. The thing is, with college basketball, look who was in the Final Four last year. Yeah. So, FAU, un FAU, unlike, FAU. like, if you had 70 college football teams in college basketball, Florida Atlantic, San Diego State, and uh, Miami were all in there before UConn vanquished them in order to win the whole thing. There's a lot of talent out there, and it's a sport where one or two guys gets hot and they can just dominate a game, unlike just about any other sport out there. And so, it, it's really pretty impossible to justify or to, to correctly pick all of these games because you just don't know who's going to hit the three-pointer at the buzzer and who's not. I have a question, and I know this may be dumb as hell, but I read the conspiracy theory. BYU is a terrible matchup for Illinois in round two, potentially. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> now, why did you wave your hands? <laughs> so, is it true that they cannot play on Sundays? And this is why the seating and day and area that they're playing in. I don't know. I think I because I saw that their net is like seventeen or eighteen. Like BYU they do not Super. compete on Sundays. Yeah, so I wow. think Illinois had to play them as a mismatch. By the way, we had this happen last year in uh -oh. Houston. Houston was a five seed, and they brought back the same talent. Now they're the two, the, the second overall one seed this year. I I I will be pissed. If we lose to BYU because they were misseeded because they couldn't play on Sundays. That's a take. I didn't know if it was a conspiracy theory or they actually couldn't play on Sundays, and that's why they were seated where they were. Have you ever heard of Jewish players not playing on a Saturday? I, again, oh, I don't Max know. Max only did that on the high holidays. He didn't. Yeah, he pitched and in the World Sunday. Series. This isn't the first I've heard about it, so I didn't know if that was even... I, I could have looked it up. I didn't. I just scrolled past and saw that that was a conspiracy theory go, brewing on the Illinois side of the family. I'm not going to go too big into it. I just think that's weird that you would see the team certainly because they didn't want to play. Yeah, they were the 17th overall team in the seeds, but yeah, they got a sixth seed. Yeah, like that, Illinois kind of gets screwed by that, I think. Not saying it's a loss or, you know, BYU could get housed in the first round. That, that always happens. Well, when you see Iowa State just gobsmack just Houston. Just smack them around. You know man. that it's a, a lot of these games are a coin flip. You get to a certain level, you get to about round two, and it's pretty much a coin flip. I think I think games. I'm with you. They definitely like the round of 32 is always has some dramatic things happen yeah. every single year. Mm -hmm.
I love the tournament so much, I cannot get enough. Well, you've got your built-in excuse if the Illini lose to BYU. You they are, people do. I, 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 don't, I, just didn't, I didn't know if that was a thing, because I saw BYU as a really good team mm -hmm. to have to play in the round of 32. Then BYU's got all the players that are like 27, 28 years yeah, old. Yeah, just right? savvy veterans. They, who well, they go on a mission mm -hmm. for a couple years, yep. and then they come back, and they're still eligible because they went on a, a mission. Makes sense. Uh, James, thank you as always for coming Likewise. in, sir. James Carlton, Have a great Carlton. State Farm Insurance Agency in studio online at carltoninsurance.net. And I uh, browsed the YouTube chat and Turd Ferguson, <laughs> is it 215, Doug? He said, James and Steph have been helping me for the last five months after a carjacking. Oh. They have gone above and beyond, and I can't recommend them enough. Amazing professionally and personally. And then Jake Reynolds wrote James in his whole office. It's been nothing but incredible to me and my wife. Yep. Anybody working with James, they say the same. It's just a different level. I can't keep emphasize hearing that. enough. Yeah. Yep. Keep hearing and that's that. great to see in the uh, TMA YouTube chat, youtube.com slash TMA. STL. Text in 314-881-TMA5. Jeff Lottman, Compass Realty Sponsor of our text inbox. And you are also welcome to email in. Still time to do so for today's program. The morning after at InsideSTL.com. Uh, for our design air heating and cooling email of the day. The morning after at InsideSTL.com. That comes your way in about 10 minutes. Then Jackson and I go down the hallway now. It's going to be fine. You'll get through it. We will do this. Uh, it's called Balloon Party. Jeremy Rutherford will join us at 1045. Am I correct at 1045, Jackson? Yes, sir. All right. And then we have the Little Piddles. Uh, we can wrap up in, in relief group. What uh, does the relief group mean? Uh, we're just all relieved. That all I got is extension. Oh, I see. To, okay. I've had shows recently, especially recently, where I've had to earn my keep. Luckily, today is one of those days that kind of Autopilot. Itself. Yeah. Oh, you, can, you can sit back. I can, I can just go today. Yeah. There's, uh, today is one of those days where... It's a, I would describe, like, when it happened Friday, the Ollie extension first, I was like, oh, this is funny. And then second, I was like, boy, this is going to be good. <laughs> like, this oh is just red God. meat, baby. I we already had tournament, you know, on the docket. This well, dock. usually, yeah, and Mondays are usually easier than other days, but this is like... It's like a, an embarrassment of riches in terms of topics. Mm. Looking forward to it. Bloom Party 10 to 11, maybe a QFTA. I've got a lunch with uh, Max from Andrea's, actually. You know, Max and Rebecca, having lunch with them today. Yeah, just had a baby not long ago. That's right. I am uh, having lunch with them at noon today. So, Jackson, maybe we get QFTA in between. Oh, I got balloon? time. You like that? I got time, yeah, absolutely. All right, fair enough. Whatever you want. We'll, we'll workshop your round on Saturday. <laughs> I've never seen Jackson more despondent. Oh, I, I, I wanted to, like, embrace him as he walked off the golf course. And we still won money. <laughs> Somehow. Um, yeah, yeah I really, so yesterday I played... Because, like, if I, when I woke up, I was like, I don't know if I want to play. It's cold. It's windy out there. But I, like, needed to get out there just to, like, get some confidence back and just, like, make sure some of the things that went wrong Saturday aren't, like, a constant. So it was good. So I'm in a better place right now. You got back on the horse is what you did. What did you yeah. shoot yesterday? Uh, we only played nine. Um, but I shot bogey golf, which... If you saw Saturday, I would have taken mm. every day of the week. Mr. Was, Mr. Sider, are you worried Mr. Siders is in your head already? No, no, because a lot of it was... I mean, what, Siders uh, wants your ass. Yeah, he seems like he's in your head. No, nah, because the problems I had Saturday are, are... One's a mental fix, and the other is a pretty easy fundamental fix, so we're all right. Mm. Wow, he's already identified it. Yeah, we're all right. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, things happen. You know, bad rounds happen. Yeah. Wish I would have handled myself a little better. Got back on the saddle quicker. You but throw clubs? No, no. Yeah, I was about to, how'd you handle yourself poorly? No, like, I just wish I, like, mentally, like, I wish I would have, like, forgotten about, you know, next shot mentality. I wish that was on the front of my mind. It was not. Got it. All right. Yeah, there's no, he didn't throw clubs. Jackson's, Jackson's kind of ice cold. Mm, yeah, I mean. Externally. Yeah, what happens in my, my, my brain is, you know, 300. That's a battleground in yeah. there. But, yeah, never let like them know that, What happens in my brain is 300. It's a battleground in there. I, I wonder think if he's Mr. Happier. Siders heard that, and I wonder if he's now intimidated. Shout out Zach Snyder one time. <laughs> Jackson's happier just with, with a full head of hair now, and he's not so doughy after losing all this weight. That's the thing. And he's a man in love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things yeah. are going. I'm, uh, I'm happy where, as a Where'd lark. you go for uh, dinner with your uh, last this weekend? I'm sure you went somewhere. Uh, we went and saw a, a movie film, so we just went Don't, to, uh, don't say movie film. You have a problem oh. with that. <laughs> <laughs> had a problem with yeah. it. That was nice. a guttural moan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we saw a movie film on Friday, so we just went to the... The little Straunt right across from the theater. And don't say Straunt either. <laughs> we need to bring back Straunt. What was... movie did you see and what restaurant did you go to? Dune 2, 
And we went to the theater actually right down the road here, so we just went to Freddy's, just grab a quick bite. Yeah, the cinematography is great in that. Oh, it's, for no, sake. <laughs> Stop it. Stop this. Dune 2 is outstanding. Really great. What's it about, sand dunes? No, it's an adaptation of this like 60s sci-fi novel. It's really cool. It's like I would describe it as a little bit more mature Star Wars. Oh, for heaven's <laughs> sakes. It's really good. Mature Star Wars. It's like a little bit more like... So Darth Vader got pubes. <laughs> you can go read the review, mm. Doug. I'm sure it'll be... And when they got to the sand, the 14 strands of sand that went through the tube reminded me of the atmosphere of going through the brain. And it's one thing you can think about when you're going and looking at that sand. Are you just reading a dictionary? <laughs> no, this is an ad lib. <laughs> it represents the, the meaning of life as you go through life in the sand. You know, come on, just, yes. is it good or not? Stop with that. Well, that's why you invest in goodorbad.com. That's right, good. I'll be honest, Very good. I saw a movie... I forgot the name of it, but it was with Matthew Broderick and a young Reese Witherspoon. War games? About, um, she was running for class president. Oh, election. Election, baby. That's yeah. That's from uh, 2000, I Alexander think. Payne. That was an odd movie. Definitely can't be made now, but I saw that on Plex and watched that and found it to be... Plowsy? Very interesting. Same guy who made the holdovers. Really? Because you could feel the vi the vibe of it and the shooting of it felt very similar. And sideways, yeah. Is it yeah. any good? It's on Hulu. I was thinking about watching it. What Holdovers? The... Yeah. Fantastic. Iggy oh, is yeah. unbelievably it. it good. Love that movie. It's phenomenal. Big time. Maybe I'll watch it today. I was yeah. re I'm just re-watching Yellowstone. Yes, make sure you... <laughs> <laughs> you have to watch The Holdovers. It's so good. I saw Goodwill Hunting for the first time in my life. Are you kidding a week me? Or two. I'd never seen it. And it's amazing. Yeah, it's very, very good. Oh, very yeah. good. Yeah. I've never seen it either. You should have gone over to Doug's house. It always it always ranks as one of the best movies of all time, like top twenty movies of all time. Usually, I said, "Well, I guess I should see is this that, at some point." Is that the movie where he says, "How about them apples?" That's correct. Yeah, I haven't seen it. Okay, <laughs> you made well, a specific <laughs> quote from the movie. Yeah. What was so uh, impressive was that it was written also by Matt Damon. Yeah, and, when they were ben like twenty five yeah, or something. Yeah, they stars and they wrote well, the whole. It's very deep. Wrote it. Matt Damon just smoked pot the whole time. How do you know this? Oh, no, no, How do you no, know no, this? No, no. Jackson's got been yeah, activated. Yeah, it's an adaptation of Damon's short play from college. Who? Damon, Matt, Matt Damon. Damon. You said Matt Affleck. Jackson right? doesn't talk like the rest of us when he gets into film. He just goes last names, like he knows these people personally. <laughs> well, when I say Damon, who do you think I'm talking about? Johnny? Damon uh, Runyon. Matt Damon wrote like a little short play, and then they took that and turned it into Good Will Hunting. So he pretty much wrote it. Him and Ben Affleck wrote yeah, together. Yeah, Affleck just took credit. Oh, gosh. Did, there didn't have to be anything <laughs> negative about it. I was just impressed that they were so young and wrote such a complicated, well-thought-out script. I was told he did no work in it. Okay. Who told you that? Paper. A piece of paper? Article. Oh. Okay. Doug broke bash, that down. I didn't mean to bash Thanks ben for Affleck bringing out that this. movie. Sorry. Maybe I saw it in Just family impressed guy. by it, that's all. Great movie, Doug. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did. Uh, transform your story at Illinois Recovery Center. At Illinois Recovery Center, the team believes in the strength of every individual's journey to recovery. Whether you're taking the first step or continuing your path, the IRC's dedicated team is here to support you. Why choose Illinois Recovery Center? Well, they have a holistic healing approach, expert care and guidance, safe and welcoming environment, tailored programs for lasting recovery, and top-notch facility and accommodation. Whether you've made the life-saving choice to seek your help on your own, or you want to be prepared for the other end of an addiction intervention with a loved one, the chance to learn about addiction recovery, is available to you at Illinois Recovery Center in Swansea. If you or someone you know wants more information about the Illinois Recovery Center, please call 888-472-9559 or visit IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com. Jax, why don't you tell people about Mark Hanna of Evergreen Wealth Strategy? I'd love, love to talk to you about uh, Mark Hanna. He's who I work with. I know Doug has worked with him. Iggy oh, yeah. has gotten some great advice from the great Mark Hanna. Prod Joe, who's uh, the commissioner of the Fantasy Baseball League. Yes, draft tonight, Doug. Yeah, he's sure, worked, uh, he worked in, baby. with Mark Hanna. And so many of our listeners work with him. And I think the biggest, uh, the biggest 
credit you can give Mark Hanna is that he's so good at communicating with his clients. It's something really important when you're talking about your financial future. This is your financial person. This is the person helping you shepherd you through your financial life. And you want that person to be able to communicate their message effectively with you. Because like, if you're like me, I'm not too positive on financial things. I don't know what I'm doing. And that's why I work with Mark Hanna. And the way he communicates his message, he makes me understand it, helps me. And I know if I ever have to change anything up or have a problem with my plan, I can get on the phone with him and feel better getting off the phone. Then when I got on the phone, to me, that is worth everything on top of Mark just being a really excellent human being. That's why I love working with Mark Hanna. That's why you will love working with Mark Hanna as well. 3-4-8-8-9-0-5-0-3. Or go online at evergreenstl.com. That's Mark Hanna, Evergreen Wealth Strategies. Doug, why don't you tell people about our 9 o'clock hour sponsor, and that's Schaefer Door Company. There, there's nothing more frustrating than you need to go see Mark Hanna or James Carlton or one of our other brilliant sponsors. And you go out in the garage and you hit the button to get the garage door to go up. And it won't go up. The door will not go up. So you, you pull on that little rope thing to disconnect the opener. That's from the garage, brutal. And you break that. And then the door's still not up. Then the door's too heavy. It's locked. What do you do? What will you do? Well, you call Schaefer Door Company. Or if the, just the remote, you get back home and the remote doesn't work and the garage door doesn't go up. It is so darn frustrating. Schaefer Company... Door Company knows this, and they've got all the answers to fix all of those problems. They'll be there. they got a special team ready to go on Monday morning just to take care of all the problems that happen on the weekend. So if you had problems over the weekend, you know to call or text Schaefer Door. It's 636-782-3608. Here's the spelling of that name. There are a lot of Schaefer's out there. S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R. I'll say that again. S-C-H-A-E-F-E-R. And their website is SchaeferDoor.com. Now that you know how to spell Schaefer, I assume you know how to spell door also. <laughs> SchaeferDoor.com. They service all kinds of garage doors for service and new installs, and not just the residential garage doors. If you have a business with a big warehouse or something, you've got the big, tall doors, yes, Schaefer is very experienced in those types of jobs as well. Any kind of job you have, big or small, Schaefer Door is there to help you out. So go to SchaeferDoor.com, call or text 636 782 3608. Schaefer Door is a Cloplay Master Authorized Dealer. There you go. Uh, we will have the Design Air Heating and Cooling email of the day coming up in a matter of moments. Jackson and I will have Balloon Party at 10 o'clock. We'll have QFTA at 11 o'clock. Can we do that, Jack? 11.05, 11.10, then sure. you can upload Balloon Party after that. Yeah, no worries. Uh, send your emails in for QFTA. T. McKernan at InsideSTL.com, although we are... Uh, we are full, so uh, we'll get to uh, the emails and try to catch up from doing a bunch of QFTAs with the emails. T. McKernan at InsideSTL.com. Anything and everything is welcome. Boots hasn't seen the movie, just the clip from Family Guy. That's from Pug in the East Village. Yeah, I think I said that. Yeah, there you go, Pug. <laughs> uh, and then somebody else said, Iggy saw Family Guy. good about it. I think I said that. <laughs> oh. Wow. I said maybe I saw it on the same Family Guy. Uh, nobody watches more TV on the planet than <laughs> Iggy. That's from Taint McRae. Oh. Doug, you see Taint McRae's post on, uh, TikTok? Oh, God, I missed it. <laughs> missed it completely. Where you can see her breasts. You didn't see it, it No, like. who's no. that? No. Tank? Breasts. Who's breast? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who Tank McCray. is. McCray is. You do it naturally. Tank, it's hard. I, I think it's hard to say. I don't know who Tank McCray is. He's just a texter, isn't he? You show his I breast? I don't know. I don't, I don't follow him. I'm confused. Tate McCray. I don't know who that is. She's a singer. We talked about her quite a bit. I thought it was a texter. Well, there's a guy texting in his Tate McRae, because I think when we brought up Tate McRae a couple weeks ago, you called her Tate McRae, and so he changed his name to Tate McRae. Oh, okay. I think I vaguely... Many marks the Columbia Beaver. Oh. <laughs> God, I love that guy. Oh. If he would be around oh. during the signing, can I not mention oh, him? Oh, can you imagine him? Strauss's column after the Marmol extension? God, oh This my. comes off his columns about Matt Carpenter, Lance <sighs> Lynn. The injury reports. Yeah. Carpenter's actually had a good spring. Yeah, he, he looks actually pretty decent. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Two maybe, uh, spring maybe games I've Turn back seen. the clock. Fight Cardinals. Fight Cardinal fight. Uh, Doug, uh, ESPN just posting, predicting which MLB teams will return to the playoffs in 2024. This is David Schoenfeld and his math. Okay. He's got the Yankees returning at 60.1%. He's got the Cubs returning at 53.5%. And then he's got your St. Louis Cardinals huh. returning at 
8%. He says the reasons they'll miss October again, well, the injuries are already starting. Gray suffered a mild <laughs> hamstring strain. Um, and keep in mind that while Gray pitched eight, 184 innings last season, he averaged just 128 through 2021 and 2022. Also, Gray is the youngest of the three starters they signed at 34 years old. <laughs> Michaelis will get your opening day start. Throwing 35-year-old Miles Michaelis, and this is an old rotation with the resulting age-related risk. Meanwhile, Newt Barr has two fractured ribs after falling while trying to make a catch in the outfield in early March, although he may also be ready for opening day. And Tommy Edmond, the projected center fielder, still dealing with wrist soreness following off-season surgery. And how much offense will the Cardinals get from Goldschmidt and Arenado? After all, the two future All-Famers are the primary reason the offense wasn't as strong as it was in 2022. The two created about 242 runs in 2022 when Goldschmidt won MVP honors and Arenado finished third, but created about 176 runs last season. Given their ages, that may be their new level of production. Well said. He's down on us. Well said. Oh. He was truthful. Well, I honestly can't wait for the lines for the uh, bobbleheads. <laughs> Are you rooting for this team to do poorly? <clears throat> I did, there's no point to root for them to do poorly because I thought a few years ago if I did that, like changes would be implemented. But I think now, like this is what we're going to get. I think we're in a sad state of affairs, and we're going to be kind of running that same playbook for a while. Mm. So I don't know if cheering for them to lose and going to get what changes I want out of the club. Well, get ready, Palsy, because, you know, Lynn may start off 3-0 and with a 2.86 ERA and two-year extension. I'd love to put in a big piece of crow in the oven and eat it, but I don't see that happening whatsoever this year. Could be wrong. Don't think I am, but hey, you never know. Well, Got to play the game, Doug. Sure yeah. you do. And we're uh, we're a week from Thursday away. So how do you do? That's insane. And there are twenty four days away from the Mastlings. We're gonna go down do there do? for opening day. We're gonna do our show over there from opening day. In L A. Oh, it is in L A. I'm, I'm. How about the home opener? I'm that San Diego. The home opener, right? Are we? I uh, will be out of town for my sister's wedding when the Cardinals have their home opener. But uh, that's poor scheduling on her part, Tim. Thank you. Exactly. Why does she hate the Cardinals? I bet, I bet you guys had a real long talk about, you know, look at the schedule next yeah. time. That's what I said. That's, what I said. that's mm -hmm. exactly what I said. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the design air heating and cooling email the day. I could tell the asparagus dish that he ordered off the secret menu at the Jack in the Box in Kingdom City, Missouri was a bit under-seasoned okay, as I right siphoned to the pungent broth from the other end of my wife's father's rewarding catheter. Oh, rewarding catheter? <laughs> Put that off. But the apple tartlet chunk that I sucked straight out of his clots me bag oh, was the perfect breadable. That's <laughs> enough! Who was it, Tim? Uh, his name is Bill Gapes. Bill Gapes, you've been suspended. You've been suspended a period of two days' time. It's Microsoft guy. And your name, as we speak, is going into the Illinois Recovery Center suspension log yield. Check out IllinoisRecoveryCenter.com while serving your suspension. Might do you some good. Our Tim, who art on HD2 Radio, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is on YouTube. But this email is about Iggy's comment last Friday. And just as sure as Lady Gaga has an Adam's apple and a monster penis, I'm going to respond, I don't just mail it in. You just mail it in. You gosh darn geriatrics, you will really make me laugh. I do you a favor and mention you in my email. First of all, you're all done. The Strode family don't even have that kind of money anymore. Oh. <laughs> you got chased out of the fan page by a bunch of walry and the other posters. What do you think is going on here? You think you can come on here and critique the fan page? Remember if the year, two years running, I talked to Jackson. I can make a deal with him and still keep my emails through the filter file. That's from Eden and then the last name Doug is Schlong. Eden ah. Schlong. He's new. And Young, Man. Colts and Ravens will be co-hosting a draft watch party next month in Chicago, per a source. Thanks. That's some number one Asian intern, Brian Henshin, a.k.a. ASMR Lux, really loves the soccer. Find my page on the YouTube. Punch the like button and caress the bell with your tongue for notifications. Oh. And I'll help you, quote, open your laptop, unquote. Brian Henshin. There's a sewer issue where I work. The pipes don't vent properly, causing a backup that produces some... Pretty gnarly smells. It's hard to be productive with the offensive scent of raw sewage radiating around my desk. 
smells like a soiled diapy baking on an asphalt parking lot in July. The putrid aroma is distracting, but there is one slight advantage. I can rip the stinkiest farts and no one knows. No. My coworkers think it's the nasty smells coming from the sewer line, but it's secretly my innards releasing the remnants of yesterday's Cobb salad. Come on. I can blast my silent butt bombs all day and get away with it. I bet my office still smells better than your studio, though, with your four dudes cramped in that 9x9 nine nine janitor's closet. It's not a janitor's closet. 9x9's nine nine about right. <laughs> I can imagine your sweaty... Gray hair grundles, ruminating swampy crotch soup as you whine about Mike Tirico <laughs> and try to figure out why an elderly renter refuses to pay for a gin while you stew in your own juices. I bet that skinny lesbian dude running the board works up some especially poisonous gas after mixing cherry coke, yogurt, and lunchables like a middle schooler. <laughs> I digress back to my sewer story. My nose has been stuffed up lately due to my allergies, so I've been breathing through my mouth. You want to know a secret? I can actually taste the sewer stench on my tongue, and I like the way it tastes. That's from the JV Golf Coach. Okay. JV Golf Coach. The Cardinals' ability to read the room is devastatingly bad. The Marmol extension was the worst extension the city has seen since Hubbard went ahead and extended the guy who only shows up on time for three days after Mr. Tommy. Is that what Tommy's going by now, Mr. Tommy? I don't know what he is. Swats his whittle bottom and then reverts back to his outlaw ways and <laughs> whose ability to pirate OnlyFans leaks is only rivaled by his ability to pirate every possible drop of oxygen in that pisser adjacent euthanasia booth before Tim Duggar plows he can get any. I'm convinced Diggy's Apple laptop is the first computer on record to preemptively commit suicide <laughs> before he could infect it with oodles of the <laughs> she-mail porn and whatever their pirated smut that would make even Adriana Chechik blush just pops up. The moment Lady Gaga's former makeup artist cousin's friend's sister-in-law handed it to him, it knew it had to sacrifice itself for the betterment of humanity. Save me a spot in a fan page club championship. I used to have a gin. I'm not sure if it expired or if Craig, Drew, and Gino effed around and locked me out of the app. Could I spend the $25 to update it? Yeah, I could. Am I gonna? Everyone knows what I shoot. Rules for thee, not for me. Oh, and by the way, if Mike Tirico, Joey Zanaboni, KG and O-Town, Lisa Ann, Beer Cat, Stephen Wildwood, or Producer Joe have anything to do with this, I am out. And I had way better pop pops than you, to be honest. That's from Blueberry Pop Pop. Blueberry Pop Pop touching lots of bases. And finally, Sadie Hawkins, Doug. Scotty Scheffler won the players as Wyndham Clark's birdie putt on 18 had intercourse with the hole and then pulled out. The Blues, who've won four in a row, yet only have a 4.9 chance of making the playoffs. The Dogs played a wild 3-3 draw in Los Angeles behind brilliant goaltending from Roman Berkey. Iggy's email guardian, Craig Rutledge, was not a fan of Santa Boney's call. <laughs> Indiana State were snubbed from the big dance, and I don't know how the committee can look cream Abdul-Jabbar and Isaiah Swope in the eye. Plowsy balances a laptop on his shin when he masturbates. Are there guys who masturbate with both shins? Yeah. But I think the lead is that Bill DeWitt doesn't just tolerate mediocrity. He rewards it as Moe's little pet Marmol got a two-year extension before the season's even started. The president of baseball operations most explained, quote, we got into camp and felt like things were being run well and did not want to go into the year with this being a distraction. He said that with a straight face! Oh. The Cardinals won the World Series in 2011 with a lame duck manager who went over Moe's head to force the Rasmus trade. But the Cardinals aren't trying to win the World Series anymore. All they're trying to do is bounce back in a crap division without anyone going rogue. Sure, the Cardinals finished 20 games under 500 for the first time since 1990. And sure, Ali allowed Wilson Contreras to be scapegoated for the pitching struggles. And sure, the 37-year-old who never played in the show is so lacking in clubhouse poise and leadership that they're wasting a rock spot on Matt effing Carpenter. Ultimately, Marmol earned this extension with his ability to absorb Blaine without bucking authority. <laughs> Congratulations to Lefty Jacksmere on getting into Prod Joe's Fantasy Baseball League. Ignore Iggy's offer to be co-manager that he prefaced with don't tell anybody while simultaneously confessing the ploy to the entire TMA audience. Thoughts? Concerns? Buck Swope! Buck Swope with a nice little email Go this back. morning. And that's what we have for the design air. Heating and cooling yeah. email today. Swope brought it strong. I thought Brian Hinchin had a pretty good one. 
I'm going to go with Blueberry Pop Pop, however. Blueberry Pop Pop, I thought was the best. Yeah, I thought it was JV Golf Coach when he mentioned Mr. Tommy. <laughs> talked about farts. Uh, but I got to go with Blueberry Pop Pop. Blueberry oh, Pop Pop has nine wins. I thought Swoop did really well. It I was mean, a good one. they were both working. A good one. Fun to see. Fun to see people peaking at the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, uh, congratulations to Blueberry Pop Pop. That's nine wins, and he's getting close to clinching the bunt of Borch here uh, very, very early. Jackson and I are going to clinch winning at life, though, Doug, because we're about to do a balloon party from 10 to 11. Mm -hmm. Then we'll do QFTA at 11 o'clock, and then I'll have lunch with Max and Rebecca from... Uh, Andrea's. And uh, I'll probably enjoy it and talk about their barbecue sauce because no, it's so glorious. Would, yeah. uh, so that's what we got coming up here over the next few hours on uh, Balloon Party and on uh, the Tim McKernan Show podcast. Time for us to shut it down for the Plowhawk, for Action Jackson, for Kenneth Iggy Strode, for my brother Kevin, for Douglas Sullivan Vaughn. I'm Tim McKernan. This has been The Morning After, presented to you by Brown and Crouppen. Urban Dictionary defines thirsty as.